Good evening, everyone. Thanks you for coming out on a very wet evening. If you would um, please rise and join us with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'll do roll the roll call. call of council. Council Member Snow. I'm here. Flynn. Here. Wozniak. Here. Wilms. Here. Fowler. Here. Burke. Present. All present. Thank you. We'll go to citizen input. As you know, we normally have 30 minutes. That's 10 people at three minutes each. We have 23. So I would entertain a motion to suspend the rules. So moved. Second. To allow everyone who wishes to speak this evening has the ability to do so for their three minutes. For their three minutes. So, Mr. Wozniak, was that you? Second, yeah. Second, and Mr. Snow or uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Wilms. Do the motion. Okay. Roll call on that. Councilmember Burke. Yes. Fowler. Yes. Wilms. Yes. Wozniak. Yes. Flynn. Yes. Snow. Yes. Terry. Thank you. We'll start off with um, Maria Pope. Hello. I thought I've been here. We've all been here a few times. It's Maria Pope at Four Hillcrest Lane in Bentonville. Um, gentlemen, first off, I want to tell you that the minutes from last meeting do not accurately reflect my words, and I want you to take note of that. It reads that I feel the proposed rules will prevent my family from operating our properties in a profitable manner. My words were misconstrued to paint an inaccurate picture. What I said was our numbers in terms of finances would work and would be able to pay our bills following the model we currently use. Never once did I talk about making a profit. In fact, I emailed each of you my monthly expenses. Uh, my monthly expense sheet today to show you exactly what we require in rental income to be able to pay our bills. I also showed you what it would cost us each month if occupancy was tied to septic size um, rather than the MLS listing we relied on when we bought our homes. The costs associated with owning a large home are much greater than those associated with a standard two-bedroom house. Um, in case you didn't read my emails, it would cost my family in excess of $36,000 a year if it was decided that my 3,000 and 3,500 square foot homes could only sleep six people based upon our septic size. Those were the numbers I was referring to at our last council meeting. Clearly not profit margins. With the septic proposals we're talking about having to sell our properties in this current economy and taking a loss that would literally cause financial destruction for Brad, our four young children and me, we would be ruined. How, how do I ask, do I ask, how do I explain that to my children? Secondly, since it's been stated by several councilmen that Airbnbs aren't going anywhere in Bella Vista and are here to stay, the emotional vendetta by a few community members needs to stop. Can we not all come together with representation from citizens, STR owners, and councilmen? In fact, since many taxpaying owners are not allowed to vote in Bella Vista, Bella Vista elections, wouldn't it be the democratic thing to do to table these ordinances and work together for the good of the entire community to find a solution that allows everyone to live congruently in the town we all love? I just had an amazing conversation with Peggy who is not an STR owner and we are talking about like the ground that we both share. We both agree STRs need to be capped because that keeps Bella Vista the community that we love. We both agree that ordinances need to be enforced because it keeps Bella Vista the community that we love. But we're not seeing these things together. We're not seeing, we're seeing STR owners versus people who aren't STR owners, and that is not the community that we live in. Anyways, gentlemen, I ask you to table these ordinances until we can work together to find a reasonable, fact-based, and enforceable solution. I'll be the first to step up and offer to volunteer my time. It is the slow vacation season here in Northwest Arkansas for the next six months, so there is no emergency. So let's do this right for everybody. Will you take me up on my offer to serve? Thank you. Thank you, Maria. <laughs> Sandy Ivy, please. Uh, 
Hello, I'm Sandy Ivey, live on Fleming Circle on Lake Brittany, and I have a short-term rental that um, I have never had any problems with. Um, it's been a great thing for people. They've come, they've stayed, they have now decided to buy houses here. I have numerous brochures, coupons from local businesses that my uh, renters can utilize and have and have made comments. I have a book that they can make comments for the next folks that come in that, you know, hey, this place is a great place to eat. It, you know, it's, it's, it is a business for me. Um, I have some health issues, so I can't work full time. And this has been something I've worked very hard at. And um, I do believe there needs to be some kind of accountability for after I was here like two meetings ago and listened to those poor people talk about the trash and the parking. And, um, you know, there, there has to be some level of accountability. Um, if I am forced to pay a large amount of money for registration or occupancy or whatever, then it's, it's a wash for me and I'm working for nothing. And I live on the property. Um, it's on the lot next door and I live on the, so I am there at all times. I also keep an eye out for other Airbnbs in the area where the people don't have a clue what's going on at their place. So I, again, I understand that we need to have some accountability in a registry or, or whatever it takes. But it as, you know, it's a profit to local businesses. It does bring people in. I've enjoyed the people. They've enjoyed uh, the lake. I get them guest passes. And it's, I don't, I don't agree with the whole sewer thing because if I have a large house, a 3,000 square foot house, and my daughter's gonna get married, and I've got a bunch of family coming in to stay for a week, you know, I normally wouldn't have to go through anything for that. And this doesn't really pertain to me because my place is only like 400 square feet. So, I, you know, if I'm speaking in terms, it, it just seems like it's getting to be a little big brother. And um, so I would love to find the common ground of making owners accountable for their parking, their trash. What, you know, one of the meetings here was about the Asheville property. I found out who owned that property. I got in touch with them. I told them about noise meters. I told them about outdoor cameras. I said, you need a point person here in Bella Vista. I mean, I get it. I get where everybody's coming from. I just want to be able to, to meet each other. And, and like the gal previously, I would be happy to be on any kind of a brute squad to make people accountable because it's, it's really not fair to the folks, the rest of us. Great, thank, thank you. you very much. Shannon Davis. Things have drastically changed in the last two and a half years, as many of us are very aware. No matter, no matter how we view the last few years, I think the speed in which things have changed have made it difficult to make decisions, especially when things are as tense as they are right now. The SDR issue has started to, to divide our community, and it's made raw emotions pour out from both sides. It has made governing more difficult, no doubt. And I agree with the first speaker. I think it's time we start getting resolutions now. Decisions must be made, leaders must lead, and issues must be resolved. Gentlemen, the election's in two weeks which I'm sure many of you are very well aware. Show your constituents that you can work together to resolve this issue and other issues that are most surely to arise. Lead when it's hard. Lead when people may vote against you. I ask you all to be an example and let's start leading and let's start moving Bella Vista in a way that we all can live together. Thank you. Thank you. Bryce Cole. What side is she on? Can I get your address from you, Mr. Cole, please? 38 Swanage Drive. Thank you. How's it going, everybody? First of all, thank you all so much for everything that y'all been doing. Most of y'all have been working really hard on this, and it goes uh, very much appreciated and noticed by everybody. 
kick it off, I, I same exact story as Maria. So you can go ahead and encapsulate everything in her, put quotations, put it under me in the minutes. That's, that's my story as well. I want to kick it off by saying that we need to be very frank and very, very clear. The capping of homes that were purchased, such as mine, as a four-bedroom home at a two-bedroom septic rate is a taking of the value of our property and means that we will more than likely have to sell. And this is the place that we dreamed of retiring in. We really, really have to understand that and come to an agreement on that. You, you can't say that we are for Airbnbs and STRs and Bella Vista and at the same time put legislation before this council that is going to destroy them. That's just a fact, okay? We, I, I hope we can all come to an acknowledgement and agreement on that. Also, this is not an emergency. We have time to think about this. We have to figure this out and get it right for the benefit of the entire community. Again, it is not an emergency. I ask that everybody do the due diligence to make sure that we understand the full impacts here. Um, we need to really consider the full financial implications, not only to the homeowners, the community, the businesses, all of the people in, in, that are involved in that, and I just ask that we take the time to do that. Also, I'm asking that we go ahead and push to table this so that we can take the time to really figure out the financial aspects of the entire community for this. Um, there's no actual issues. I've been to all these meetings, I've heard them. It doesn't really seem that there's any actual real issues that have arisen that are outside of what are covered by ordinances or current laws that are in place. I certainly agree that we need to have a, regu a registry and very common sense regulations for Airbnbs. But outside of people talking about how they don't want people in their community that they don't know or that are not like them, there really have not been any issues that have not been addressed by current ordinances. I really, really urge this council to take a look into that and actually look at the actual concrete problems that we're supposedly uh, resolving with these. At the very, very least, I ask that we suspend this motion until we can actually take a full economic look at to see how this is impacting it. We love Bella Vista. We envision retiring here. We purchased a lake home. And as this ordinance sits right now, I'm going to be losing my family, my kids, basically half of my house. So unless someone wants to write us a check for half of what we paid for the house that's on the REMAX listing, I, I don't know what else to do there. I think that there may be a real issue here. I think that the city council should roll up their sleeves and do the hard work to provide sewer to everybody in this town. If we have a real septic issue, and we're going to say that we have a septic issue, then we should do the work to solve the septic issue. I mean it with all due respect. Please, Doug Fowler and your team, don't put this on the backs of me and my family and those of us that bought homes on the lake, okay? Thank you all for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Amy Malaya. Apologies if I pronounced it correctly, I'm incorrectly. Um, and may I have your address, please? Yeah, it's, it's Amy Malaya Coppets, and I'm at 14 Pool Circle, Bella Thank Vista. You. It appears to me that there's been a large push by Doug Fowler to try to get his version of the ordinance passed quickly, simply by stressing that it's an emergency health and safety issue. But I need you all to hear that there is no fire to be put out, as I think you've heard from Several who have spoken already, our septic, dis septic systems are not failing and we're headed into the winter months where many of us are gonna have little to no occupancy. So it's gonna give our systems time to rest and renew. I'm strongly encouraging you all to take the time to give this due legal process so that when the ordinance has passed, all the due diligence that's proper has been performed. Failure to give it at least three readings is not due legal process. Regarding the septic issue at hand, Council, please remember we are talking about less than 4% of all of the homes in Bella Vista. Is it really possible that less than 4% of the homes could cause an ecological disaster? I don't think so. And my short-term rental proven data shows that even though I sleep up to 13 on a two-bedroom permitted septic system, I have never exceeded the capacity for a two-bedroom septic permit based on my water usage, and my annual usage is less than half of the overall recommended capacity for the system. Nobody seems to care about the facts, though, that we're sharing. We're simply using septic as a crutch to find a way to keep out large family groups from the short-term rentals. Though you're not looking to enforce this same septic diligence on long-term rentals or the long-term owners of homes. So the ordinance in itself is discriminatory in nature when based on the septic issue. Second, 
what would you propose I do with all of the existing reservations made for next summer? Many extended families have made reservations already. They've bought their tickets. They're excited about coming for their family reunion to Bella Vista. Would you all like to call these families for me and tell them they're no longer welcome to come? How would you feel if this happened to you and your grandchildren? They're most likely going to go elsewhere, and they won't be back to bring their business to Bella Vista again. All the existing reservations that are made on the books should be allowed to continue and grandfathered in, regardless of the passing of an ordinance. And if I have to cancel them, you all may be hearing from these disappointed families. Third, as of yet, we have not seen a list of the health and safety requirements that will be mandated by the ordinance. So unless everyone's prepared to hand us this list, you can't, in good conscience, vote on carrying out something that's not clearly defined. And if we're only given 120 days from passing to be permitted and in compliance, that list must be available at the time of passing so that we can do our due diligence as necessary. Our request to the council is as follows. Number one, drop the septic issue from the ordinance and instead address septic issues citywide fairly and without bias. Second, please reconsider the no nonsense ordinance as it was proposed by Steve Burke. Third, we would love to see this issue tabled altogether until the incoming council and mayor are seated because they're the ones who will be working with us on enforcement in the future anyway. And please, all of you think for yourselves about what is right. Thank you. Stacy Lamb. Arkansas. Councilman, you are the leaders of Bella Vista. Arkansas law gives you the authority to protect the health and the safety and the welfare of citizens and the visitors that come to, to the city. You're tasked with accepting or rejecting an STR ordinance according to the legal limits of your leadership positions. I want you to keep in mind when you consider this ordinance that there's not been a single documented septic failure due to SCR usage. There's not been a single ticket given to SCR owners for nuisance problems within the city. There's not been a single case of an SCR owner pay, not paying their required sales tax to my knowledge. There's not been a single case of an owner, I mean of a guest or otherwise getting hurt due to safety code issues within an SCR home. Let me say that again. There's not one single documented case of any of these health and safety issues that Doug Fowler keeps screaming from the rooftops. But here we are for months now discussing the same issues. And despite your long list of health and safety concerns, the council wants to exclude several subsets of SCR and long-term rental owners as if they magically don't need um, a regulation because uh, such as the Greens, the Cooper development, uh, larger S, um, and larger SCR owners and long-term rental owners. And this question has to be answered because we need to know, do our rentals need regulation based on safety and health concerns or do they not? This is the ultimate question. And if they do, let's get behind that question with real documented data, not emotional complaints from a few people and from the scattered notes of a bullying councilman. Several of you have stated publicly that you're all for, that you're, that you're for property rights and that you stand for justified and fair regulations for all. Please vote now to table this topic until you can truly understand the impact of these regulations on your own community. In fact, I would suggest to vote for an economic impact study. And once any real documented problems are identified, the majority of us SCR owners will stand with you in making Bella Vista the best damn city it can be. Thank you. Nathaniel Green. Yep. So, kind of hard to follow that up. So, yeah, uh, definitely agree with uh, what was just said right there. That all of this discussion about these regulations regarding all the different uh, STR now, I guess it's six of them that are on there. I mean, it 
then it definitely comes back to where is the de demonstrable proof of there actually being any issues? Where is this? And then, as already been said, having some kind of actual economic impact. What 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 is going to happen to the tax income? Because what's done through Airbnb, VRBO, those taxes that they take in, how much loss is there actually going to be to the city? Because there's people that are going to shut down their STRs, they're going to sell them off. Potentially some of these folks are going to go into bankruptcy and have that type of actual economic impact to themselves, let alone what it does to the greater community. So I just think that these regulations should be at this point in time tabled set for at least six to twelve months to have actual like I said what has been said by myself and others actual impact to what the community what is actually going to do so thank you thank you <laughs> Jessica Green Um, I know I spoke here once before, and unfortunately, Doug, you were out that night, so I'm glad you're here, so that you can hear our stories and see our faces and understand that you aren't just making an impact on some kind of piece of paper. You are making an impact on people's lives. My husband and I moved here from Houston, Texas. We came here specifically because we were told this was a beautiful place to come visit tourism, I'm a bicycle tourism leader. I'm a mountain biker. I lead mountain bike rides for a living. I give bike trips for a living. I want my customers to come here and stay in my Airbnb so I can take them on bike trips on these very trails. You guys have built, you guys have built a community that is like yelling and screaming, come see us, come visit us, come hang out with us. But at the same time, you're talking another direction because you're saying, but don't stay in our homes. That's not cool. That's just not cool. It's real hard for me to um, encourage my guests now to want to buy a house here. I used to just hand out cards all the time. Buy a house here. Buy a house here. This place is great. I bought two land pieces. I also have um, had several home opportunities. And speaking of economic impact, I myself have passed on multiple home purchase offers to do myself and restore those homes because I do not feel comfortable with the infringement on my homeowner's rights that are being pushed up on me by the city council here. I am unsure of the direction that you guys are going, and that my insecurity stems from your questionable desires to regulate property owner rights. Property owner rights are renting. Renting is not defined by categories of renting. It is renting. When did short-term renting become a violation of renting? That is a question of mine as well. And I just really want to question you. Why are you promoting this as a beautiful place for people to come and visit and tour and be and play golf and ride on your bikes and lakes, but at the same time, you don't want them to stay in our lovely homes? What is wrong? There's something to be wrong there, I say. I really think you need to table these measures to develop a fair and proper proposal, a real view of the real issues. As others have said and will say after me, this is our slow season. We have time to round table with you. Get some of us that are in the room begging to talk to you to sit down and actually listen to us. Okay? Ask questions. Open your ears. Listen. Stop being, you know, what you want. Be what's right for the community. That's what's right. If Airbnb is here to stay, then you need to work with us. We are local homeowners. We live here. I live in the very house that I rent the basement of. And I know what's going on. And so I would like for you to really think about this. Several of my guests are repeat customers. Several of my guests in the past have purchased homes here. Think about what you are doing economically as a whole. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Michelle? Michelle Chiaco, 51 per Fleet Drive wants the septic issues taken out of the STR ordinance. It limits the ability to make a profit on STRs. Do not restrict the rights of property owners to use their property as they wish, exclamation point. 
This is what was recorded as my statement to the City Council last time. I ask you not to pass the minutes without amending them because in no portion of what I said did I mention anything to do with septic limiting the ability to make a profit on SDRs. My words were how I was limited by the government to make an income and that I made a choice to short-term rent a portion of my home to make ends meet after the government decided who could and who could not earn an income. As an owner-occupied STR, I am always on site. I always meet my guests. I always talk to them about septic and what is allowed and not allowed in the pipes. I go over every ground rule, and I've never had an issue that's being complained about by those who have such a hatred of STRs. I'm asking first for all owner-occupied STRs to be exempt from all requirements other than registration and first-time fee. Second, I am asking the council to respect all owner property rights and to please do not use the consensus ordinance, which is authoritarian and a complete overreach of local government, and to please instead consider using Councilman Burke's ordinance that is logical, well thought out, and not an infringement on property rights. Or at the very least, include a grandfather clause that states while well counted towards the cap, existing and operating STRs will not be subject to inspection or approval and be given permits with registration and applicable fees. The clause could expire when these existing grandfathered STRs are sold, transferred, or ceased to operate. In speaking with multiple state senators yesterday, they will be addressing how to handle out-of-control city governments from legislating away people's property rights when it comes to short-term rentals in the next assembly. The right to rent property is a fundamental privilege of private property ownership as shown in many state Supreme Court cases with decisions stating short-term rental is residential rental. Just a side note, there are so few owners who even know that this ordinance is happening, and it would have been nice as stakeholders to be included in the discussion. If I had to guess, I'd say maybe 10% of the 480 know. Perhaps you should have given them a heads up. I only knew because a councilman let me know personally. How do you intend as the city to let them all know, or are you intentionally waiting to penalize them and fine them no less than $250 and no more than $500 per your ordinance? Having served the west side of Bella Vista for 12 years as a justice of the peace on the Benton County Quorum Court, I weighed ordinances that would affect my constituents' rights and always voted to protect their constitutional and property rights. I urge you to do the same today. Vote no on the consensus of Fowler's ordinance and move to adopt Councilman Burke's, the one that was handed out at the work session last week, not the one in the packet. If you will not do that, I ask that you table the ordinances until a new administration is seated and start from scratch with a committee, please, that includes owners, citizens, and city council members. Thank you. Thank you. Damon. Damon Wallace, uh, 51 per fleet. Um, yeah, at the last council meeting, I mentioned about getting the owners of the STRs together in a committee uh, with also with other owners and stuff too, to come up with some solutions uh, for this ordinance. You have to know what's going on. If you bring, if you bring uh, guests in that are uh, experts in certain areas, uh, like you did at the at the one uh, I guess working session where you brought someone in from Little Rock to speak to the council about the uh, septic systems and stuff. So they they are professional in the septic systems. Well, here you have the professionals that are actually renting out their houses, the ones that are involved with the STRs, need to commit to do a committee on that and to get their input in order to to form a, a good ordinance. And until that's done, you're really not allowing these citizens that you're representing to have their say and to, and to come up with something that will work for everyone. Uh, I will say that, again, going back, uh, I presented it the first uh, meeting I came to, the SDRs provide about $144,000 a year in sales tax revenue to the city of Bella Vista. And that's not counting the uh, uh, A&P. So these are people that are actually contributing to that. When you're looking at regulating them, a lot of them have gone out and uh, you know some of them have borrowed thousands of dollars to renovate some of these properties. What the uh, what you know several of the owners have said, we have invested our lives, we've invested our money, and to do certain regulations uh, that can cost them bankruptcy or the value of their property. You know, is something very much that none, none, of, none of you would want that to happen to you in property that you've invested in before there was any kind of ordinance. You wouldn't want the city, uh, any kind of city or county coming in and passing something that would affect you and your family. Um, so I'm asking you also to do the, do the committee thing, you know, really get the STR owners involved. Um, 
so that you get a good uh, basis from the experts who are doing their business and remember that they are contributing to the sales tax revenue of Bella Vista. Thank you. Thank you, Damon. <laughs> Gordon Zeiser. Good evening. Good evening. You're not going to want to hear from me. Um, our neighborhood, I've been in our, I've been here for in Bell Vista for 24 years, built a home, live in it today, uh, thoroughly love it, love my neighborhood. Uh, our neighborhood's first exposure to STRs was last spring. Um, I'd never heard of an STR in Bell Vista. Um, we um, had a house sell, and the only thing we knew about it is it sold to somebody in California. No big deal. We got lots of people in California in our neighborhood. And um, we waited around, and uh, the neighbor that lived closest to it said that uh, she was kind of waiting to see who moved in and when, and, and uh, she's a very welcoming person. So. She seen some activity up there one day, and it turned out to be the owners, and uh, she went up to greet them and welcomed them to the neighborhood, as she often does. And uh, she had a little exchange with them. It was pleasant and short, very short. Um, I'd like to quote, uh, just to make, make this very clear and understandable, the statement that the owners made to this neighbor lady of ours. They said, I quote, we don't want your cookies and we don't want to get to know you, unquote. I can assure you there was no money exchanged hands in that little episode. Um, ever since then, as neighbors, whenever we see a for sale sign go up in our neighborhood, and it doesn't happen very often, but uh, it, ha it has happened a couple of times. We get kind of anxious, and we get, some of them actually get fearful. And we don't know what, what to expect. We don't know what's coming. Uh, we don't know, um, well, I guess one of the reasons we feel anxious is we don't have any control of what happens in our neighborhood. No control at all. We're just sitting there, living our lives, and all of a sudden, boom. Um, when I moved into my house, um, I got a permit to build. I didn't even ask the question if it was zoned residential. Assumed it was. I still assume it is today. Um, a lot of us are just sitting there, and these commercial for-profit operations are coming into our neighborhood and they're setting up shop, and they are a business. They do not comply with the zoning in Bella Vista as far as residential property is concerned. They are definitely a commercial operation. They are there to make time money. Is done, sir. Pardon? Your time is done. My right. time is done? Yes. Yep. Everybody gets three minutes, Gordon. Okay. I, I would just like to encourage the the board and the mayor to consider the residents of Vela Vista instead of considering the money okay. that's involved there. I know there's a lot of money to be so made. That's yeah, yeah that's I hear you. Thank you. <laughs> Diane Bland. Diane Bland at Six Robin Lane. Um, my I I can see both sides of this. I can understand what he just said. My husband and I um, live in Bella Vista about half of the month. And while we're not there, at times we, we rent it out as an STR. Um, we have neighbors that were concerned, but we have talked with all of them and we have wanted to know what their concerns are. And we have, we have made them happy. And there's been a few times that we've had some people violate our rules. 
and we have gone to great extremes to make sure that those people know that they did not follow instructions, they're never allowed back, and to talk with our neighbors. We've, we've installed exterior ca uh, cameras and um, so that we can regulate who's there and who's not there, and we don't allow parties. Airbnb and VRBO do not allow events and parties, and if people are doing that, they're violating <coughs> the rules. Um, I don't, you probably know the history of Bella Vista, but for those that don't, Bella Vista was created in 1914 as a short-term lodging rental, for, and it's, it was that way for 50 years. Then Cooper bought it and had over 600 rentals and built it to be, quote unquote, a vacation retirement community with no age limits for 50 years. Yep. Now, almost 100 years later, um, well, before I say that, I want to say 6% of the homes, um, when Cooper had it, 6% of 15,000 homes were short-term rentals. Today, we have 15,000 homes and some being built, and um, it, has, it has always been known that Bella Vista is a resort community, and there are not 4%, as one person said earlier tonight, there's 3% that are short-term rentals. My, that's half of what they were when Cooper was doing that long ago. <coughs> We've been here 27 years, and we have always loved this area, and we hope to retire here. Um, it doesn't make sense to me that homeowners should be restricted, um, and somebody, some of them have a mob mentality where they're sending out these panic letters to all the neighbors telling them, all these horrible things. It sounds to me like it's more of an issue with that person not liking what's happening next to their house. I have a similar situation here in Bella Vista of somebody who is not doing any of the rules and there's no way to get them to answer the door to get um, notices and things like that because they don't take care of their yard. It looks like an abandoned house. But nothing's been done. Um, and they have harassed us many times. I feel like it, there's a mob mentality going on here and I, I hope that, um, that you will listen to us and vote, not vote, but know that those that vote for you do it for their best interest. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Tony King. Hello, I'm at Four Stickney Lane. Thank you. And I just wanted to read a response that I put in after hearing about the uh, short-term rentals. I wasn't aware, but it's my um, dealings as to what I've had to put up with, um, and it's, it's not been good. But anyway, I write, this is a big concern for anyone not wanting a motel as a neighbor. When I retired and purchased my home, I just wanted a quiet, friendly neighborhood. In the spring, the home next to me was purchased and turned into a motel. It has been nothing but new guests arriving weekly, plus the cleaning crews. The yard is allowed to grow until it's overgrown. The trash container stays out in the road. I've gone over and moved it up to the house several times for them. Um, the hey baby calls from the truckloads of bikers that come and go are not appreciated. My dogs can't enjoy their yard and have their noses at the windows watching for the next arrivals. The latest concern is the overflow of my sep not my septic, their septic water that was from broken toilet. Apparently it had been running in their home for several weeks, but as it is with the people that are there, they don't notice, you know, it's not the owners. So Anyway, I went to mow the yard, and my mower sunk in the wet mud into my yard, and I got off of the mower and sank up to my ankles in the mud from the septic from the neighbor's yard flowing into my yard. So um, the owners who live in Colorado assured me that it was fixed. Well, three weeks later, it's still wet in that area, and the water was flowing through the fence. I clean my dog's feet after they've been out in the yard, which they can no longer just run free in their yard. I don't need septic being brought into my home. 
um, it, ra it went into my raised bed garden, ruined what was left of the fall tomatoes and that type of thing. Um, not sure what the answer is, but Airbnb is not the answer when you live next door to a revolving door situation where we have two to three different groups each week, in and out, in and out. And there will be up to five cars parked along the street. They're not able to park in the homes drive. And um, I now have locks on my gates, and I have no feeling of a neighborhood. My days revolve around what they are doing because I don't feel safe to go out in my yard, as they can see in from the hill. They're up higher than I am. So anyway, thank you. Thank you. Peggy Lucas. Good evening. Peggy Lucas, 23 Dewsbury Drive. Just like we are becoming a mountain bike destination, we cannot deny that Bella Vista has changed from a vacation community to a residential community. We have 13,000, I heard tonight we have 15,000 homes, 30,000 residents that need representation right now from you. Residents need to know that you're voting to protect their community from becoming a transient community. Hence the need to limit the number of STRs. You agreed last week or conceded, some of you, to 600 in last week's work session. Last week's work session was long. It was uh, tedious and arduous for all of you. But you agreed on some things. You aligned on some things. Um, I was in the bathroom five minutes and met Maria. I knew Maria was an STR owner a Bella Vista resident, and when I met her, it was like, okay, are we aligned or not? Are we friends? Are we not friends? But it took five minutes for Maria and I to agree that we agree we need permits. We agree that we need a, <coughs> a maximum number of permits allowed to prevent the uh, transient community. We agree that we need occupancy limits. We agree that we need to enforce, uh, have penalties for violations, and revoke if needed. If, if people are non-compliant, if owners are non-compliant. So in five minutes, we agreed on all of those things. It's taken several months for us to get to the point, all of you guys, you've had to learn a lot, we've learned a lot, but there are some things that we agree on tonight. You did the work last week, so I'm asking you to move forward with what we've aligned on last week. Uh, in reference to there's no issues, I'll share my personal issue, and there's been several people at these meetings who have shared their issues. We have a STR that the owner, we've gone to the SD owner and they've pretty much said, oh well, uh, we, we have a three bedroom home that seven, says 17 people can come to the home. There's no parking for 17 cars when 10 adults show up. They're parking in the streets, we're in a curb, nobody can get by. The police come out, nothing's done. The police come out, there's nothing done. And so um, it just repeats itself. This week it's guess one, next week it's guess two, and the problem never goes away because there's no accountability of the owner. The guests are gone. So um, so this is what we're asking you to enforce. And so um, thank you for the work you did last night. We just need to move forward now and get it, get it approved. So thank you. Thank you, Peggy. Craig? Uh, Craig Honshaw's uh, One Scott Circle. Uh, the only thing, Miss Lucas, she pretty much summed up everything that I had. Uh, the only thing that I would add, uh, Councilman Burke's proposal, I think it's great. I think uh, tabling and uh, impact study on the septic, I think that would be an important thing. Uh, my family and I fled from a college town that went through all this housing stuff. We came here because we watched our neighborhoods dissolve. I mean, literally go from neighborhoods that were owned or kept in shape to miniature hotels, every single house. I mean, we were, I think, one of the last two families that actually lived in our neighborhood when we finally moved out. The rest of it was all miniature apartments, if you get my drift. <laughs> but. You know, that's the concern that I have. The only thing that I would ask, uh, and not to reiterate everything that everybody said tonight, uh, you know, accountability to me would be the big thing in a registry. You know, I don't, I don't think that's outside the realm of reality and just responsible ownership. 
Um, you know, and I, if you want to get into the safety side of things, I mean, I don't know, you know, if somebody's house burns down, you know, I think that's one of those things where, you know, when, when we moved here, the ice storm hit, we had neighbors across the street, tree fell on their house. We knew how to get a hold of them because neighbors had information. But outside of that, I mean, you know, what do you do in that situation? Just like a flooding basement or, or anything else that happens like that. You know, just so the city has a way to reach out and contact these people, whoever owns it. I mean, it, you know, and that's the one thing too, is that there needs to be a definite delineation between long-term rental and short-term rental. You know, you can't marginalize renters per se, especially in this economic market. You're gonna see a lot more renters, you know, so. We need to make sure that that distinction is kept separate. You know, you can't you can't lump renters in as a as a whole. So, but anyway, that's all I had to say. I appreciate y'all's time. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> Ellen Creekbaum. Hello, <laughs> Ellen Creekbaum, 50 Churchill Drive. Y'all made great progress last week. I'm so proud of you. You worked together. And special thanks to Doug and all those city employees that have helped you to get all this put together. The only thing that many of us feel that needs to be added to that permit process is a density clause. Before a permit is approved, the number of short-term rentals on a street, cul-de-sac, and neighborhood must be reviewed. This would prevent sandwiching and an owner becoming the only resident on a street. Mr. Flynn has brought up this issue of sandwiching at a prior meeting. Now it's time to get it back in, or get it into that ordinance. And this is urgent. And there are issues. I have a story of Don and Rosalie. They retired here, so this is their retirement home. And they have continued to and have contributed a lot to this city. They are now 80 years old and they feel they have lost their sense of neighborhood. They want to walk outside and see familiar faces. Not having neighbors makes them feel very sad. There are three houses on their cul-de-sac and one is already an STR. The other is likely to be sold soon and then they will have to move. They see people going and coming so quickly at the STR that, they, that the house could not have been cleaned between renters. Having an ordinance will support property rights on both sides. The property rights of STR owners do not trump the, permanent, uh, the rights of permanent residents. If STR owners aren't supporting an ordinance, I must ask why. We cannot go without an ordinance as STRs are a non-existing use in the code. The city has reviewed and denied permits based on septic and ADH rules. Inspections and permits will help keep renters safe in our city. It will help keep residents from losing community and maintain quality of life. It will set limits which will benefit permanent residents and short-term owners. We recently stayed in five Airbnbs in the Northeast and none of the places we stayed were in residential neighborhoods like Bella Vista. Two were in rural areas, three in commercial settings. Safety is an issue and what some people may consider safe may not be considered safe by the renter. Overall, it was not impressed with the properties we rented. So let's move forward so we can move forward with septic regulations for everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bill Allen. Sure, put all these notes together and it doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> I just want to say that I've been here for 18 years. By trade, I'm a CPA. By practice, I was an auditor of cities, counties, states. And the time to have regulations is before things go wrong. That's the time to have rules. Don't wait till it goes bad and then put in rules because it's too late. And the rules need to be based on criteria that's, that's reasonable. That, that's all I have. Other than that, I pretty much agree with most of what's been said by both sides. Thank you. Connie? I'm going to okay. David and Connie Jacobs. 15 Fort Patrick Lane. We have a five bedroom, five bath lake house that uh, we rent out nightly through VRBO. 
We bought it in 2005 and have rented it out since. We know all the neighbors. They have our name and our phone numbers. In the 18 years, 17 years that we've had it, we've not had one complaint. It's rented virtually every night in the summer and then lots of nights rest of the year. Uh, we are retired from New Life Ranch in Concord, Oklahoma. So this is our main retirement. Uh, we welcome any feedback from the neighbors. We communicate with the guests and we have loved getting to know the people. They love coming to Bella Vista and being in a residential neighborhood. We have one group of quilting sewer ladies that have rented the house 22 times. So we have a lot of repeat guests. We think some regulations would be very reasonable and we don't mind being held accountable for what happens. We think that is healthy. Great. Thank you. My thanks to both. Sharon Clark. One old Burry Lane. I'm here to represent some good friends that couldn't be here. They're developing another property, and I can't help but wonder if it's not so they can leave Bella Vista. I hope that's not true because I really am crazy about them. But uh, they asked me to speak up for them, and they're at 28 Brittany Lane. I've got some pictures here that they sent me from wherever it is they are developing another property. Nine cars, and then the police got called in for for noise, so if you want the copy of the pictures, that's, I have plenty of them. But so obviously there's a problem on 28 Brittany Lane, and what I'm told is there aren't two, but three short-term rentals in that neighborhood right near their street. There are two right on the street, and they have a beautiful, beautiful home. Um, and the, the um, short-term rentals are on either side, so they're sandwiched in. Um, I don't really have personally a problem with short-term rentals. I just would like to ask you guys to really think about how many do you want? How many do you want? Because I looked up on Google, and correct me if I'm wrong, but there are 45.9 square miles in Bella Vista. If you figure, I don't know, if you decide you want one short-term rental per square mile. I, at first I thought neighborhoods. Well, I know, I know. Uh, we could decide on one or two or whatever your number would be. You know more about this than I do uh, per neighborhood. But then I looked at how many neighborhoods there are. We're in Bristol and there are just lots of them. So I thought, okay, we have to go to square mileage. And so I looked up 45.9 square miles, if that's correct. Well, gosh, that'd be 45. It sounds like we already have more than that. I don't know. I don't know how many we have. But I would certainly think, be thinking about how many do you want? I don't think it's a problem to have them, but I do think that regulations are in order uh, with no laws or rules. We have what? Anarchy. Um, I think we have to have some rules. So uh, loss of, of quality of life, that means a lot to me. I like knowing my neighbors and I know each and every one of them and we do uh, pass around cookies and you don't get that with short-term rental as neighbors. Thank you, Sharon. Larry Kelly. My name is Larry Kelly. I'm a real estate broker. I uh, live outside of Bella Vista at 12506 Collar Lane, but I have multiple properties here. 
and I sell properties to investors interested in short-term rentals. Pretty active in the market here. Um, you know, I've given a lot of thought of this. I've been to most of the city council meetings that have reviewed this, been to as many work sessions as I could, and uh, have thought about it on both sides quite a lot. In fact, I, I sent each of you an email this afternoon. I hope you were have, able to read that. If not, please do so when you get back. Uh, but there's a lot of emotion attached to this issue. A lot of emotion on both sides. Yeah. And I think that in many cases, a lot of facts have been ignored. Uh, I'm not so sure about the justification for this because just as some of the other previous speakers, I haven't heard a lot. And many of the things that have been negative, and I don't discount the folks that have been affected and impacted by bad behavior. In fact, I empathize with those people a great deal. I think that everyone should have the right of quiet enjoyment of their property and that that shouldn't be infringed upon. Whether it's a short-term rental or a bad neighbor or a jerk that's staying with somebody next door. I think that when you call the police to take care of a parking problem, it should take care of it. I think when people behave badly, I don't care if they're short-term rental people or permanent occupancy. They should be arrested and taken care of. I think that what I've heard, an overwhelming theme in this conversation this evening and in others, is that the police aren't doing the job that they ought to be doing in many cases. I know they're trying to be friendly. They're trying to be helpful. They're trying to be supportive of the, of the people coming to visit our community. But by God, if you're going to have a parking ordinance, do something. If you're going to have a noise ordinance, do something, OK? Don't put it on short-term rentals, because I think that what we're talking about is a handful of situations and a handful of properties, not in general. In general, just like it's been said, I don't think most people even know about this short-term rental issue or this ordinance. They have no need to. They're not affected by it. So in general, I think that Bella Vista's okay. We need to address some of these issues, no question about it. But, you know, one of the things I was puzzled by, I was invited to sit on a task force as a real estate broker and a member of our legislative committee at the Board of Realtors to be engaged in solutions for the new construction issues regarding septic systems. That was an issue that came up and, and they were trying to figure out how to deal with that and so both the realtors were engaged in that, the home builders were engaged in that. We had the opportunity to have input in advance and come up with solutions and you have not taken the same approach and consideration with stakeholders in this issue. And you should. Thank you, Larry. Don Sennett. Don Sennett, 22 Brittany Lane. Yes, there is a problem at 28 Brittany Lane. So he was telling the truth. Uh, by the way, I think the council has taken time to look at this. I, just reading the notes, I noticed you were handling this way back in June. And that doesn't seem like uh, a long time, but it's a long time when a problem is growing. My daddy used to tell me, from the time you're born till they carry you off in the hearse, things ain't so bad that they can't get worse. And if we don't do something about the expansion of the STRs, I mean, we've heard for, from some very good managers of their properties, and my heart goes out to them. I think you can consider them in your regulations. But we also can say, we want a moratorium on new for a while. So you have time to slow the growth. Uh, we have two on our block already, about three more, and you know I'll be on Motel Road. The problem that I run into is they park on the lawn, they turn around in the driveways, leaving tire marks, just little things, but it happens all the time. The other thing that's a big concern is something maybe the owners can't control, but we need to be aware of. The people coming in, they don't have to register as sex offenders. We got kids in our neighborhood. So we have people coming in, and we don't know who they are. 
and we don't know who many of the owners are. I've met my owners. And, uh, but what do we as owners do when there are problems? We can't keep calling the police over parking. That's not what they're there for. We don't have parking enforcement. We have police that are designed to protect us. We also have a city council designed to protect us. Thank you. Thank you, Don. <laughs> Jesse Keller. Six Daventry Lane, Jesse Keller. Um, just to make something abundantly clear, in the Keller family, we always will accept cookies, no matter <laughs> if we're in a short-term rental or not. Um, so as has been said earlier, Bella Vista was built as a resort town over 100 years ago. It's always been a short-term destination. The vacation rentals um, have had as many as over 600, and that was a, a 6% number, and the homes in Bella Vista now that are short-term rental are 471. That is a 3% number, not four. Um, it's not an emergency. 3% does not an emergency make especially when we've been at a much higher number and there wasn't a problem. It sounds like there is a problem on Brittany and um, that's why anecdotal evidence isn't reliable because it, it's not factual. It's emotional and it makes us all feel something and the same goes for the short-term rental side. I have no problems. I could give you lots of anecdotes from my, from my short-term rental. I have no issues there. Um, so we have to go by facts. There's no evidence that the septic system is not working or that it won't continue to work. We need to have clear facts and evidence of what it can handle and what's going to happen, not guesstimates, not worrisome, living our lives in fear, making rules just to make rules just in case. That doesn't work. That's not OK. That infringes on my property rights. That infringes on my um, investment that I've made. It would be financially devastating to accept this current proposal for short-term rentals. That is not fair to my family. Um, as has been mentioned, other cottage industries are not being targeted for this. They're not being inspected. They're not being registered. They're not, all of these things are not happening in the same way that you're trying to come after short-term rentals. Long-term rentals, why are they different? I don't think that they should be. I think that we should be treated the same. We should be allowed to use our property in a responsible way. I have no problem with accountability. Maybe the people that own the Brittany STRs have a problem with it. I don't. The vast majority of short-term rental owners do not have a problem with accountability. Um, I will echo my willingness to be on any kind of a brainstorming panel to come up with a solution. Um, it's clear that there's going to be regulations. I would hope that they would be fair, and I would hope that you would take into consideration the point of view of the short-term rental owners. Um, and I really, I strongly advocate that this be tabled until we can get some real facts, real numbers, real evidence of what's happening and not just guessing or making up our own statistics on this. And that's all I have. Thank you. <laughs> we had a gentleman who wanted to attend this evening and at the last minute had a family crisis, so he asked me to read something to you. His name is Jim Bukowski, and he lives at 6 uh, Tewksbury Circle. Dear Bella Vista board members, first off, I'm grateful for this meeting and allowing for comments to be shared. My wife and I moved to Bella Vista because of the beauty of a wonderful environment and the POA whom we assumed would shield and protect the residents who live here full time. We have lived in other areas of the country without a POA or restrictions and people basically destroyed the areas. Here's what we've experienced in our Gloucester neighborhood. Our two adjacent neighbors are from out of state and they have made their properties into STRs. What is ironic is that the POA of the neighborhoods of the people from Texas prohibit STRs along with many others, but it's fine to ruin Bella Vista. Crews from Louisiana, Florida, and Texas have rented the homes for temporary workers. That is a big concern for me personally having these individuals around my home. I travel with my business and I need to leave my wife alone. When we moved here, I thought that would be one less thing to worry about. I also do not have to tell you that there are many single women, either widows, divorcees, or by choice, that also reside alone in our neighborhood. In addition, Bella Vista has begun attracting many young families with children. 
This unknown transient population poses a great threat to them as well. We've had to clean up trash thrown in the yard by renters, which they blew into my yard in the POA easement next door. I do not feel comfortable confronting these careless individuals due to fear of retaliation, either during or after they are supposedly gone. It's embarrassing when we have a, a visit by family or friends and the renters are milling about in the street smoking cigarettes and leaving butts strewn around. I'm not a janitorial service and resent needing to clean up the area. One group of renters unloaded what, a, uh, what looked like lighting and camera equipment, judging by the appearance of the two young ladies out near the mailboxes and how they were dressed. I doubt they were planning to film movies for the Hallmark Channel, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I read a shocking article that some SDRs have used the residences to manufacture meth. I shudder to think about the long-term implications, health risks and hazards that could pose. We are so excited and proud to be part of the Bella Vista community, but sadly now we are considering leaving if this continues. The area is not turning out to offer the protection for which we had hoped. Other neighbors are as concerned as I, but I do not know if they have chosen to speak up or not. We know for a fact from living in previous areas that once this gains momentum, it will be next to impossible to stop. Obviously the word is out, or we would not be finding that so many out-of-state buyers have no intentions of living here. They only have plans to make big bucks at the expense of the residents that live here full-time and call Bella Vista home. I ask you, is Bella Vista going to continue to be known as one of the premier residential areas in the country or deteriorate into another sleazy place where companies and individuals can come in and do whatever they please and exit without care or repercussion? My wife and I are extremely disappointed with this growing development, but you have the power to correct the situation. Please do not let individuals that do not live in or care about the village destroy our beautiful area, our reputation, our homes, and our property values. Okay. That's the end of citizen input. Now the next on the agenda is council member reply. Who wants to go first? Jim? You know, I, somebody who's not here tonight asked me to just throw it out there. And you people have done a lot of throwing of this out there about tabling it till next year with the new council. I told them I wasn't going to go for that or after that till I heard from everybody, but I told them I would throw it out there and see what kind of traction it would have amongst everybody else. A whole bunch of you folks were leaning that same way, okay? And then, of course, if we do that, I would be all for a group, small group, no more than nine or so, with council, uh, permit people, and owners. And one other thing, you guys mentioned a number of times tonight, you like Steve's ordinance better than the rest of them. And if I got the right one, because there's so many, if I have the right one, it doesn't mention septics, which make everybody happy. But it did have a maximum number of people per house, regardless of the bedrooms. Which means if you've got one of those bigger houses and the first couple people had larger houses and had more people, you know, they're going to be way on the other side of that. So that's something else to consider because, you know, I, I don't have a problem with Steve's either, but he put a number on it. Stay away from septics. Probably a good thing to do early on, but he did put a number on it, which would affect everybody. Next. Okay. Anybody else? Doug? Um, yeah, so... I mean, you know, I don't, at this point, I've talked about this over and over and over and over and stated this, some of the same things over and over. Uh, you know, I hear what everybody's saying. I think most of the issues with most of the short-term rental owners, and, you know, let's face it, uh, pretty much short-term rental owners that are speaking, it's pretty much the same people every time, with the exception of one or two. And I said it, it, it revolves around occupancy. Uh, because the tying occupancy to septic build-out obviously isn't going to meet their, their own personal goals and their own personal needs for the properties that they have. Um, I'd like to um, 
and maybe step back for just a second because we'll, we're going to get into some of the details, I think, a little bit later. So I don't want to go on and on, you know, about some of that like right now because this is just feedback for uh, the public comment that was made. But I want to make, make a point, make it perfectly clear. Yeah, my name is on the ordinance that I proposed, you know, Doug Fowler ordinance. Uh, it really is not the Doug Fowler ordinance. It is the residents of Bella Vista ordinance. That's where the conversation started. I mean, you can call them whatever you want. Those, those pesky residents that voted for us to fill these seats to represent them, that's where this started. And um, I think the very first conversation I had with anyone was actually at church. I had a gentleman approach me, and this has been, I don't know, I don't know if it's a year and a half or two years ago, and he sold his property on Loch Lomond, and he approached me and said, hey, uh, I sold this property, and, you know, we're still living here in Bella Vista, obviously. Uh, we just moved to a smaller place. We downsized a little bit. But it's a home uh, that has a two-bedroom septic build out, and they advertise the occupancy on uh, whatever booking site that whoever these individuals use that bought the property. They have occupancy of eight. He goes, how can they do that? You know, I mean, that, that's just not right. The city needs to do something about that. First conversation I had, okay? It didn't have anything to do with noise or trash or parking or anything else. Um, and then, you know, not too long after that, again, I've stated this before, I started getting complaints by email. I started getting phone calls. And, you know, it started to perk up my ears. I uh, came over to CDS one day, a conversation about something else, and I was talking to Doug, and who, by the way, Doug Tapp, he's our director of uh, community development services and I said yeah I'm starting to get these phone calls about short-term rentals you know there we've got some issues out there and he said well, yeah we said you know what we're starting to get a lot of them they're coming in you know pretty consistently and he said not only that because you know some of these properties are advertising for occupancies of 8 10 12 14 people and I was like really you know I mean quite frankly I was a little stunned uh, because I recognize first of all you know Ty Deceptic you know, that was kind of like a, an, a, another, a, a step that I had to open up my eyes to and to begin to research and understand. But secondarily, just in my point of view, I'm thinking, you know, 14, 12 people in single-family residential homes in our neighborhoods, knowing the size of homes we typically have across Bella Vista, just did not feel right. And I didn't know, in my own mind, you know, how we could rectify or justify that, you know. Uh, not as just a city council person, but just as a guy that's living here. I'm thinking, you know, what if my house next door to me, um, you know, decided to go with short-term short rental, and they're all at once putting 10 and 12 people week in and week out in there. By the way, we have more than just 10 or 12 being advertised on these uh, short-term uh, uh, home booking sites, right? It's just like, does that feel right to anybody? I mean, I don't know. I mean, maybe if you own a short-term own a short -term rental, uh, it feels good to you. You know, and, you know, just lastly, before we go on, because we're going to talk about this a little bit later, and all due respect, when I read Steve's ordinance, it feels more like an invitation to open the door for more short-term rentals to come here. you got a cap of 750, and as of this morning, I pull, pulled down the new data from Granicus, and we have 484. It was like 471, you know, like last week or the week before, so now we're 484. Uh, so 750, 50% 50 increase in what we have right now. Uh, there are no uh, uh, safety inspections of the homes, and I have information that says we need to do that. CDS says we need to do that. I, we got a note from Chief Sims today, uh, our fire chief, and he says he's all for safety inspections at these properties because they've uncovered problems in the past. We actually had a home burn in 2010, and somebody died, you know, and it was because of electrical problem that, you know, could have been identified, but it wasn't. <laughs> um, and then the occupancy of 12. Well, how can we put an occupancy of 12 blanket across the city when we know we have so many two and three bedroom septic uh, systems permits out there, which is in direct conflict with the Arkansas Department of Health guidelines. And I actually have the document like right here in my hands that states that it's two people per bedroom. Those are the guidelines. So anyway, just speaking of that, we can speak to it a little bit later. Not anything personal, but that's just the way I view it. So um, anyway, I hear what everybody says, but as far as like the work that's been done, 
oh my gosh, it is extensive. I mean, you know, we had uh, an open meeting here at the court. And what month was that? Uh, Taylor, are you here? Taylor, sure, what month was that? March. March, last March. I mean, here we are October. And we started the conversation, you know, God, I don't even know. It was like July of the year before. So we had that open meeting. Everybody came in. We heard feedback uh, from everybody, you know, from both sides of the conversation. That's the first time I met Maria. I actually invited her in after we got the first draft done, came in next door in the CDS offices and sat down and went through it with her. And I got a lot of head nodding, yes, 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 until it came to occupancy. And then that's where she had her issue, right there because she told you what occupancy that they advertise for on, uh, on whatever Airbnb or VRBO, whichever one they use. That's when the issue came up. But there's not anything been secret, uh, behind the scenes, underhanded. It's all been above board. I proposed the first ordinance, right? And then we had the special session. We went through it person by person. We talked to every single point in there and adjusted numbers or perspective or whatever it may be. Um, and then we actually did it again like last Monday. And as far as uh, like no conversations, oh my gosh, we don't have as many people speaking tonight say, supporting an ordinance. It's because they don't want to show up. They don't want to get up in front of everybody. You know, they've heard a lot of comments that have been made. They're nervous about doing that. Trust me, there are a whole lot of people out there that support an ordinance. And as far as some people, that, that aren't really dialed into the conversation right now, it's because they haven't been affected by it yet. They haven't had one come in next door to them. But they're going to, and you know, just, just, to, just to round this out a little bit, we're talking about the total number. I mean, we have so much information from cities across the country, Sedona, Steamboat Springs, Breckenridge, Eureka Springs, uh, uh, Bend, Oregon, it goes on and on and on of cities they kept their, hand, their head in the sand until they woke up one day and it was like too late. Their cities were overrun. They're no longer communities for the residents. They're transient communities. And now they're trying to put the genie back in the bottle and they can't. And you know, people say, well, you know, I don't know. I feel like I'm the devil sometimes when I hear people talk. I'm not opposed to short-term rentals, but I, I, we, we do get out and travel. My wife and I, we stay at these properties as we travel, but also some of these communities, it's like, you know, we don't even have any interest in going back to Sedona anymore. It's so overrun with uh, visitors, you can't move around the city. It's just packed. You can't even drive into the town, and that's just a fact. Now, we don't have the limits on the number of roads driving into town like they do, but it's just unbelievable what's happened there. And I'll tell you, they, they don't have enough people to work in the businesses, you know, uh, as, as staff. Uh, they don't have places for them to stay. Those are all taken up. And so anyway, I don't, I'm kind of getting lo lost here in that. But if we look into the future just a little bit, we know that a lot of large parcels of land have been bought up in Bella Vista, and they're going to be developed in the not-too-distant future. And we think we have a lot of short-term rentals now. Well. Just wait until all that, that development begins, and it will begin. And you've got to decide what kind of community that you want here in Bella Vista. Do you want it to be a residential community where, where people know people, they know their neighbors, they know their neighborhood? I, I mean, we love our street. We had a short-term rental. They sold it, oh, I don't know, two or three years ago. I didn't know that there were a whole lot of issues with it until I brought it up, and I said, are you kidding me? There was stuff going on there all the time, you know, people coming and going and noise and trash and part. It's just like, uh, uh, but our neighbors know, everybody knows everybody. Everybody walks up down the street, you know, and shares and swap stories, know each other's families, et cetera. I'm just saying, there's a short-term need and there is a long-term need. And we can talk about more of the details in the ordinance, you know, when we get there. But all this feedback of that there hasn't been enough work done or effort put into it or research oh my god i have so much information and research i can't even there's no way i can regurgitate it to everybody you know it's just so hard to do because there's so much that says that we need to do something we need and we need to act sooner rather than later and uh, one of the things for that was said about planning and getting ahead of things our planning department back there it said plan and avoid, not react. And I heard that a couple of times tonight. And that's what our planning department is all about, is let's, you know, let's act and get ahead of this now and, and, and try to be as reasonable as they can 
given the, given the parameters that we're working with here. And we do have a unique situation with our septic systems, and they're a concern. And I'll just say, you know, we had Richard in from the Arkansas Department of Health. I had a lengthy conversation with a, a, a lady named Bobby, Bobby's last name. Off the top of my head, she's a septic designer. I'll tell you what, they're both, both very passionate about this, and they're trying to give us a heads up here. We have 12,757, give or take, septic permits issued in Bella Vista, Arkansas. We have no secondary fields if the first field fails. They're allowing us to continue to build septic systems here, okay? Although, in the guidelines of the Department, uh, Arkansas Department of Health, they really shouldn't, you know? So, and by the way, I have proof, we just had a septic fail occur last week. And it's like two doors down from a, 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 a current STR. STR, it's not them. I'm not saying, you know, that just because they did, the STR will as well. But I'm just saying, we just had one. And I know we've had them in the past. There's one gentleman that got up and spoke, to, spoke tonight that had to get a special permit to put in a specially built septic system that cost thirty or $35,000 at a property that he bought, you know? And he's opposed an STR regulation in, in the septic portion of it. I don't understand. So anyway, that's enough of that, but we'll get on in a minute. But I'm just kind of frustrated, you know? You can't tell, because there's been a lot, a lot of work put into this. Okay, thank you. John? I'm, I'm not going to say a lot, because we're going to cover all this. Uh, I was very affected by the uh, uh, recent uh, email we got from the fire chief about uh, the need to have safety inspections. And I've been kind of constantly looking for ways to give the owner occupied, in particular, a break. And uh, I asked the chief specifically, do you think the owner occupied should have the inspection on the fire side of things also? And he said, yes. That was just shortly before this meeting. Um, and, you know, I've been uh, traveling around the community a lot, talking to a lot of people. And uh, th it's interesting that some people live right next to a short-term rental, and they're fine with it. And some, it's just a disaster. And it seems to have a lot to do with the owner of the short-term rental and how they act and how they communicate, and in particular, the the corporations from out of state, the further out of state they are, the worse it is as far as communication. But uh, Doug's right, there's a lot of people that want something done and they want it done uh, quickly, not months from now. A lot of people. They don't all show up here and talk, but they're, uh, I've heard from a lot of them. Okay, anyone else? Larry? I guess a couple of thoughts. Um, when we talk about regulation of STRs, I've got numerous emails from property owners of STRs saying, we are not against regulations. We are against regulations that are unreasonable and restrictive. And I tend to agree with that thought, uh, which has been my goal in supporting some regulation. First of all, we need to address the issue that we have a, an activity in the city that's been brought to the council's attention about improper usage or illegal uses because it's not provided for in our zoning code. Now you can say, well, how come? We did address bed and breakfast because it was a separate issue. When the city created their planning and zoning codes, it was known about Vacation Rentals managed the short-term and long-term rental properties that were here for the most part. There wasn't, I don't believe, an Airbnb and a VRBO and a few others at that time, way back at the beginning of Cooper's development here. The Vacation Rental Program uh, appeared to manage and oversee the properties they were assigned to or they took on responsibly and we didn't hear or see any problems about noise, about uh, debris, about garbage, about uh, parking. Uh, there weren't problems like that brought to our attention. It's happened since they've closed down. And there's a change in the short-term rental program, if you will, uh, in terms of how it's done. 
the reason this is before us is, in my view, is because we've had some irresponsible owners not managing their property well or carefully. And so it's created problems to the neighbors, noise problems, parking problems, trash problems, and other things, trespass problems. Uh, one property on Brittany Lake, uh, on Lake Brittany was mentioned tonight. I have a friend there, and this may be the same property they're referring to, uh, but people come and trespass against across their property to get to the lake, leave trash, throw trash. Uh, so it is something that we need to somehow address. And our law enforcement department is, I think, one of the best ones around our neighborhood uh, in terms of northwest Arkansas. But as most policemen, when they are called to attend your address, they don't know if it's you personally who own the property, who's having a big bash, invited all your friends, neighbors, relatives, in-laws, and outlaws, and they're parking all over and the police want to be friendly and not over enforcing and so they say keep the noise down um, move a few cars or whatever trying to be friendly to you not knowing that it's really an str and those are all people from out of town and so you can't blame the police that they're not doing their job they're trying to do their job as if the people in attendance at a given property lived there and were relatives of the people they are friends of. So you can't blame them, but maybe what we need to do is identify in our mapping program at the police department that a property is a STR property so that when a call comes in to the dispatchers, they know that this property is a rental property and that the officer being dispatched there should not be friendly, but should be very firm and aggressive about any violation of the code. Now, the problem is our police department is not code enforcement. That's not their primary, not their primary function. We have a code, code enforcement department. Fortunately, they only work a regular work week, uh, five days, Monday through Friday. Maybe we need to address that and, and change that around a little bit to provide some overlap. Um, I think the issue of enforcement is real. We've had lots of valid complaints. Um, more, we concur that uh, the owners, uh, there are certain provisions that don't belong in this ordinance. I support and concur with those property owners that certain provisions don't belong in this ordinance provisions relating to the septic system, particularly other than maybe inventory or information about what's there to validate the uh, capacity for that particular property. Uh, regulations pertaining to the septic system, if there are any, needs to be handled directly in a separate ordinance. So, thank you. Little clarification. You, know, you said people said how long you've been here and how long I've been here for since 1977. Why vacation rentals looked like angels all those years is because there were hardly any other houses other than those here. So nobody was complaining and they looked really good. Plus, within less than 20 years, look at our, what happened to our population. And those who were coming down for vacation rentals those years back were usually retirees looking for a place to hang out because that's how they got here in the first place. Whole different clientele was coming down back then yeah. than what's coming now. And just look at your demographics in the, in the city here in the last 10 years. So the vacation rentals did a good job, but they weren't saints. Trust me. Anybody else? Steve? I'm going to hold until we get to the agenda. Okay. All righty. We'll move on to action on the minutes. Are there any errors or omissions? Mayor Christie, I, I did hear from two tonight that uh, were, were noted, uh, quoted, or paraphrased, I should say is the right word, uh, in the uh, minutes. Uh, I think it was Maria Pope and Michelle Chioko. Both of them uh, took exception to a comment made or a statement or uh, a paraphrase in there about profit. And I think if we just strike the sentence in each of those, 
that has the word profit in it, I, I think that would uh, meet them where, where they prefer to be met. Not, not to say that, you know, anybody made a mistake necessarily, just to say they'd like that cleaned up and we can do that pretty easily. So I don't know if that requires an amendment to a motion to amend the minutes or. Mm -hmm. It uh, does. I'll make a motion to amend the min uh, minutes in both of those cases just to strike the sentence. The one of uh, Maria Pope's says uh, profitability, and uh, Michelle Chioko says uh, uses the word profit. And I think Second. those comments still hold up. Uh, okay, we have a motion on the table from Mr. Burke, seconded by Mr. Wilms. Any further discussion? Roll call. Okay, <clears throat> roll call vote on this amendment. Councilmember Wozniak. Yes. Flynn? Yes. Fowler? Yes. Burke? Yes. Wilms? Yes. Snow? Yes. Carried. If I may say so, the um, um, our city clerk should be commended for the job that he does in, in tracking our minutes. I know it's very difficult to try to accurately uh, record or um, phrase what everyone has to say. It is indeed. Good point, Jerry. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Are there any other errors or omissions? Seeing none, I'd entertain a motion to approve as amended. So moved. Second. Any further? Roll call, please. Holler and Wise. Okay. Yes. Okay, roll call again. Councilmember Snow? Yes. Wilms? Yes. Burke? Yes. Fowler? Yes. Flynn? Yes. Wozniak? Yes. Carrie? Thank you. The next we go on to the September 2022 financial report that was issued by Finance Director Hall. Um, we continue to be in very good shape financially, we're, and we continue our work on the 2023 budget. Um, we will have a special work session on Suspend the rules of order and procedure to allow all ordinances on the agenda to be read by title only. So moved. Second. Sir? Okay. Roll call. Council Member Snow? Yes. Fowler? Yes. Burke? Yes. Wilms? Yes. Wozniak? Yes. Flynn? Yes. Terry? Okay, we have some unfinished business. The first is an ordinance amending chapter 109 zoning of the code of ordinances of the city of Bella Vista to define short-term rentals to provide for inclusion of short-term rental uses within the table of uses to determine a short-term rental usage as of right or a conditional use permit within particular zones and for other purposes. This was tabled from the June meeting. This is the first reading. If you remember, this has to pair with whatever ordinance you're going to have on the regulation side. Yeah, Mayor, um, Jason, I want to a point of uh, personal privilege, but I'd like to have uh, Taylor come up and speak to what this is so the audience understands and the, 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 the residents at large, Taylor, what amending the code of ordinances uh, and, and what we're doing here. Okay. She will be able to speak to this more eloquently than me. Okay, Taylor. Okay. Yeah, um, back in June, this had a public hearing with the Planning Commission. Um, so any type of regulation that is regulating a land use, planning would appreciate the use chart to be updated with that proposed regulation. Um, and the Planning Commission recommended approval of adding um, them to be by right in all residential and commercial um, zones. And then conditionally in the P1, which is conservation, which typically isn't, development related anyway, and there's not even a, a dwelling regulation in there because there's not supposed to be anyone living in the P1 conservation. So um, we did conditional in that one. And then with the A1 agricultural, we have one lot that's zoned as A1 in Bella Vista and the district purpose for that zone is animal central. Um, so raising animals, horticulture, crops, that kind of thing. And again, not really dwelling related is it's really only supposed to have a dwelling, if it does have one, one per every five acres. So a really, really, really small density. So again, uh, we went conditional with that to meet that district purpose. And then of course the residential form wise, um, most of these STRs uh, form meet that of a single family house. 
However, the land use is a little bit more commercial in nature, so again, meeting that intent of the commercial zone, so justifying the buy right in those two uh, areas of code. Okay, are there any questions? Well, uh, I don't know if this is a question for Taylor. So should we pass this or wait and see what else we're passing? Uh, well, this is just a first reading. Yeah. So it'll, sorry, Jason, go ahead. This is the first reading. Yeah. And, uh, so we need to address these in land use, uh, in the table of uses in some way. Whether you end up doing any regulations that you propose so far or that may come in the future, or you, whether, you, whether you do or whether you don't, we do need to address it in the zoning code. So yeah. um, the, the one thing that I did say back, uh, I think in June, is we define short-term rental here, uh, and that will be the definition that it takes in terms of zoning and use. And so uh, my thought and, and discussion was whatever you end up doing in terms of regulation, assuming you do, you need to be advised of that definition and make sure that they fit together. So. That's what we've tried to do in the drafts that will be heard later in the agenda, so. Okay, okay, Taylor. You can do this and not do something else without messing anything up. Doug? Okay, so I was just gonna say, Taylor, thank you very much. Uh, I'd like you to kind of like hang out where you are, and I'd like a uh, point of personal privilege, I'd like to invite Daniel Ellis up, who is the chair of our planning commission. Uh, Daniel, could you come up? So I want people to understand, right, because I'm telling you, I mean, even, you know, personally, myself, being a city council member, it takes a long time to learn and understand how the process works and why it works like it does, okay? Planning Commission is a separate body, and they uh, approve or disapprove of variances and different things like that, or lot splits. I mean, it goes on and on and on, right? But the, the Planning uh, Commission has a lot of authority within the city, and I don't know if people really understand that or not. Uh, so... We, we could put, we could put a uh, short-term rental uh, by right usage in our zoning laws, right? But we could also make it a conditional use permit. And if we make it a conditional use permit, that means that each and every uh, short-term rental property before it could be permitted would have to go before the Planning Commission, and there would have to be a public hearing on each individual property, uh, and then, uh, you know, before the Planning Commission, and then the Planning Commission would have to take up each property one by one. We decided not to go that route, and maybe it's for obvious reasons for some people, because we're right now, I said 484 properties, it would take them two years to get through every single one of those, right? But Taylor, last week, uh, at our work session, was talking about um, all the different situations where people have come before the Planning Commission to have variances approved for fences, for retaining walls, for uh, accessory structures for driveways, et cetera, and because of ADH guidelines, they get turned down because maybe they're going to be interfering with a septic field or whatever the reason may be. May be. But anyway, by, by septic fields or whatever. So, Daniel, uh, if, if, if we went, like, property by property uh, to be permitted and somebody came before you and they had, like, an occupancy of, 10 listed or take take me through the process of what would happen and what you where do you think the planning commission would go with this i mean it's the planning commission is a body of, of seven individuals and we look at each thing as it's presented to us and, and look at the recommendations that staff bring for us but generally speaking based off of advice from our city attorney we're we hold pretty fast and hard to what our ordinances say because at the end of the day we're here to enforce the ordinances that the council's adopted and we we do not lightly grant variances from those ordinances we feel like that the ordinances were written for a reason or the health department guidelines were written for a reason and if there's a, if there's a lot of variances that are needed we need to relook at the ordinances and why uh, but when it comes to septic systems we have I don't think we've approved any variances on septic systems specifically we have held very fast to that understanding and I can't remember which councilman to mention that we don't have a secondary field for septic systems once they fail that's it you have to come up with something else and, and septic systems do have a shelf life all do you know Dan I can't 
and I know you can't speak for the whole entire commission, right? Right. But let's just say we went through the conditional use. We went one, one property by one property. The first, first up, first permit request, and they were, you would say, what's the occupancy, you know, you're asking for? They say 10. What's the septic permit? permitted for and they say two which would be four people what would be the likelihood that the planning commission would approve that i mean as a as, as this commissioner uh, we would look at what was approved by the health department for an occupancy i would look at what's an occupancy load for a, for a home and that would be what i would use for guidance is you know each lot has a plat that shows how many bedrooms are permitted and how many people are permitted and that's i mean that's what i would look at and, I, and I'll add, I'm a civil engineer. I've been doing this for 23 years. Um, and I, you know, it's, I don't, we don't go against the health department. Our, our first canon is public health, safety, and welfare. And, and kind of the health department's been set up as that governing body in dealing with water and wastewater in the state of Arkansas as far as public health, safety, and welfare goes. Okay. Doug, okay. can I clarify something for you? I, and for anyone who else is interested, if if the city went the route of conditional use permits for short-term rentals through zoning and did not use another method one thing you're going to have to consider is that all of those uses that are in existence upon the adoption of that requirement would be pre-existing non-conforming uses so those 480 whatever you just mentioned none of them would have to come back for conditional use permit because those uses were already in effect when the zoning regulation came into effect so those would only be new ones after the adoption of that zoning change. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. But just wanted to make the point that anything that would come forward after that would not be privy to that and then would be subject to the process that Daniel just spoke with. So, you know, and, and, and a point I'm just trying to make is whenever we did this uh, and put this all together, we took into consideration, you know, uh, by right versus conditional use and didn't want to go that path. You know, we wanted to make it a buy right use. So we thought about this like, you know, way in advance. Um, and also, I mean, you'll see like in one of the permit, I mean, in, in one of the uh, ordinance regulations, actually both of them, we've already fudged a little bit and said, you know what, we're willing to go three. And that was begrudgingly given uh, kind of a little bit of a head nod by Richard from the Arkansas Department of Health. And he didn't really want to do that, but he did. So anyway, Daniel, thank you. I appreciate it. Daniel, thank you. It. Taylor, thank you. Mayor, be, yes, sir. Before he leaves, <laughs> just just in case you have a comment. My my question is for Taylor and for for Attorney Kelly, oh. and and that is that if we uh, adopt this resolution, this ordinance here, independently of our other ordinance that may be regulating short-term rentals, does it inactivate the ability to do a permit system? No, because That's it's by right. No. That's Jason's question. No. So, my, and I guess my real question is, why don't we include this provision? Because you adopted a business license. All these businesses are legally operating now. Now they would have a new requirement to get a business license. Okay. It's, 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 so it's a new type of regulation they have to do to continue okay. in a particular type of use. So I, I don't see it that way. So do, would it be best for us to take this provision and include it with the ordinance that would no, be for regulation? I think that no. would create a confusing mess, to be okay. honest with you. Okay. Right. All right. Thank you. I, okay. I can't add one thing on the skills of uses. That's that's like the one thing that, as commissioners, we take from from the council that tells us how to review a project when right. it comes in. If yeah. there's nothing in there, then that leaves ambiguity for us to try to understand what the council's intentions are. So, at the very least, is clarifying if short-term rentals are allowed in a zoning classification or not or what's required for it, it would be a huge benefit to the commission in just reviewing projects as they come forward for clarification i'm not disagreeing with him passing that rule i'm only saying should it be a standalone yeah. or should it be a part of the ordinance dealing with sdrs in itself yes okay thank, thank you. you daniel taylor thanks okay so that was the first reading We'll go on to item B on the agenda, which is another ordinance regulating short-term rentals to provide for the requirement of a permit to operate a short-term rental to provide a process for revocation of a short-term uh, rental permit to provide safety inspection requirements 
for short-term rentals to provide occupancy limits for short-term rentals and providing penalties for violations and for other purposes. This was tabled from June. This was Mr. Fowler's original um, proposition. Much has changed since then. Will we table? So I, that's tabled. Indefinitely. Indefinitely. Indefinitely, right. Second. second. Okay, you've got your choice, Mr. Flynn or Mr. Wilms. As second. Any discussion? Seeing none, roll call, please. All right. <clears throat> Councilmember Burke. Yes. Fowler. Yes. Wilms. Yes. Wozniak. Yes. Flynn. Yes. Snow. Yes. Terry. Six, seven. Okay, so what we've just done, because I see some confusing looks, is we have so many of these on the books. All of them are no longer relevant. So this one was from June. The verbiage has changed quite a bit. So it's no longer something that we wish to consider. So what we do is we table it indefinitely, which basically removes it and it's gone. So that we can begin to whittle down and concentrate on the ones or one that we want to focus on. Everybody okay with that? All right. Okay, the next one is item C on the agenda, regulating short-term rentals to provide for the requirement of a permit to operate a short-term rental, to provide a process for revocation of a short-term rental permit, to provide safety and on-site septic inspection requirements for short-term uh, rentals, to provide occupancy limits for short-term rentals, providing penalties for violation for other purposes. This is a new one that Mr. Fowler brought. It's tabled from September, and this is the one that people have referred to at the work session last Monday where we spent two hours going through it line by line and comparing it to Mr. Burke's, okay? Yes, so that what I've just done is given it the first reading. Before they can become, or an ordinance becomes law, it has to have three readings. Usually it's three consecutive council meetings. It can be sped up if council wishes to do so. But this is the first reading for this. So now, if you note on your agenda, it says, see attachments, attached amendments. Okay, there are two. There is the consensus agreement, excuse me, amendment, that pulls together all the changes that we made at the work session last Monday. Okay, that's the first one. Then there's a second one um, by Mr. Flynn, and excuse me, there's a third one that was uh, put into your packet tonight by Mr. Fowler. So, let's... Well, the first there, one... There needs to be a motion yeah. to adopt the consensus amendment. Yeah, okay. so, that's what I was getting ready to do. Okay. So let's go ahead and clean that up right now, Okay, right? so you're moving it? Yeah, so I'd like a motion to adopt the consens consensus amendment that we created during the work session okay. last Monday. This is just to amend the proposals, not final adoption. Right. Just so you can get this consensus amendment in front of you for debate discussion. Okay, do I have a second? May I have a motion? No, no, just a second. Okay. Let's get to the second first, okay? Anybody gonna second this? Well, I'll second it. Okay, Mr. Flynn. So we can discuss it. Right. Okay. Right. Discussion. No, no, no roll, roll call vote on. Not yet. Not no. yet. Discussion. <laughs> Discussion on the consensus amendment. So discussion on the motion. So I think I'll, yeah, Mayor right. Christie, is it okay? Mm -hmm. uh, I, think, I think I'll use this, this time to kind of make my comments in general across the process that we've been going through here. I want to address them really to my fellow members of city council. So uh, I think everybody on city council has, has tried to work in good faith here to strike the balance between recognizing property rights, owner, property owner rights, and trying to protect the quality of life in our neighborhoods. And, and I've felt like from the beginning that we have some action to take here. And I said uh, early on in the process, I thought we ought to, on, on the first take of things, we ought to really do our best to keep it simple. We ought to provide a registry for all short-term rentals so that we know who they are uh, and how to get a hold of them and how to communicate with them. Uh, because I really felt like this was going to be more about 
more enforcement, more communication, and less regulation. And so I put a, a, an amendment or a, um, a proposed ordinance together myself and I, I feel like in, in the process over the months that we've discussed these things, it almost kind of became a competition of sorts. And I, I recognize that. And I didn't feel like we were serving uh, the residents of Bella Vista very well with this kind of competitive process of one ordinance against another. And so I kind of changed my tone of things. And I said to my fellow city councilors, I'm not here to win. I'm here to offer you an alternative that is simpler, more straightforward, a first take, if you will, that could be modified in the future if we felt like the need was there. And so it does call for, uh, for a permitting process. It does uh, not require this mapping of uh, septic capacity to occupancy limits. I think that's troublesome. I think it's going to be difficult to enforce. These are things that have been said before. That's why I've suggested in listening to the residents uh, a flat cap on the number of short-term rentals, not just to address septic capacity concerns, but to address the number of people that might be rolling up in a neighborhood every week, week in and week out, and the effect that that can have on the community. And so that's why I just thought, just put a flat cap on it, and that, that will help us manage, uh, again, the kind of the impact that these things are having uh, on, on some of our communities. And so that was kind of a concession, if you will, a move towards uh, trying to accommodate some of the concerns that I've heard from other city councilors. And so on this past Monday night, realizing, you know, uh, that uh, these competing ordinances have created somewhat of a stalemate, that the time became necessary for us to really give every city, city councilor the opportunity to go through each of the ordinances point by point and make their preference for those things known as we went through it. And we did that. We had a three and a half hour meeting on, on work session on Monday night. And it was, as, as somebody said, arduous. I thought that was a great description of it. And, uh, we went through this process, and, and frankly, I was surprised in some cases that, uh, that uh, it ended up the way that it did. But these amendments, the amendment that we're uh, discussing right now, I think there are some improvements in there. For me, I'm going to support the amendment, and then I'm going to turn around, and I'm sorry, this, this is how sausage is made sometimes. I, I won't support the proposed resolution. And it's okay if, if I'm in the minority on that. that. That'll be up to the other city councilors. But my approach to this is still available to you guys. If you feel like from what you've heard over the previous months and what you've heard tonight, if the better approach to this is let's keep it simple on the first take. We can come back. We can come back and manage septic capacity across the town. And one of the things that we've already begun is this communication program from the city to all of us who own uh, properties on septic so that we're all educated and that we all have a sense of what our responsibilities are when we own a property uh, that uh, manages uh, sewage by a local septic system. So we can do that. We can, other things can be added to the amendment as we go. We don't have to eat the steak all in one bite here. We can get started. We can require the permitting process to begin. And that's why mine is there. It's still there for you guys tonight. That's how I'm going to approach things. And I'm, I'm okay with, with what the outcome is. I, I trust your judgment. As I say, I think everybody's operating in good faith, trying to do the right thing. We may not agree on the best way to do it. That's why we have a city council. Okay, so just to be clear, you have two on here. Yeah. And one was tabled from September. Right. And the other one is a new one for this meeting. So Well, it's not a new one. It's it's yeah, it was the one that we worked through in the work session. Correct. So just to be clear, yes. when you say that you're going to refer to yours, is it when D? it comes up. Right. Is it D? I'll, I'll withdraw the first one. 
uh, as, okay, as we've so done. We'll it's it's ob obsolete at this okay. point. Yes, I'll, right. I'll move to table that one indefinitely. That motion's out of order. No, that's right. I, I didn't mean to move. I said that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> so, so when we get there. Just, just to work through the process. When we get there, then yes, you sir. can do it. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So we're still concentrating on C. Which is, is the amendment. Yeah, we're Correct. concentrating on the, the amendment. Consensus amendment. On the yeah. consensus amendment. Right. Mayor, at this point, any further debate on the consensus amendment, and then we would have a vote after that. Correct. Okay. And then I think, if I, just to, guide, to try to help, once you make a decision on the consensus amendment, Mayor, I think Mr. Snow wants to make a motion. And it probably would help if you heard that at that time before we. Yes, I agree. Okay. So let's stick with what we've got here. Jim, okay, do you have my, something? My, my question to Steve is Monday we went through point by point. You had a number of differences as we were going through, but you never jumped up, holler and scream and says, wait a minute, let's put this in there. You said back, so I got this, this deal and it'll work really easy and it's good, but you never got, as we got to point by point, you never brought it up as we were going through this. Well, you gave us at the end, you gave us twice, you said it, that I've got this, what we're talking about now. She says, I got this and this will, this will really work. And probably it will. Yes, sir. But I thought during the consensus meeting, as we got to something that you didn't like or wanted to change or add or subtract, that you would have said something then. Yes, sir, I did. As, as we went through the process, and I don't know how much preparation you put into the meeting, but you had the hard copy of my proposed ordinance in front of you. Yeah. And as, Fowler, as Mr. Fowler went through each of the sections of his, I would call out how mine was different. And then the mayor was playing the role kind of facilitator and trying to find, based on our comments and our head shakes, where the consensus was. That's the best we can do in a work session. We don't take votes. So that was the process that we had. Well, That's I, what led you know, to this amendment. That one right over my head or, or whatever, but, you know, you've got this, this well, even the occupancy thing, it, it wasn't a big, large discussion about throw the septic out and go by occupancy. Yes, sir. I had a flat rate of 12 on yeah, occupancy. And I, it's okay, Jim. I, I just didn't think you were, you know, if you're that strong on it, and, it, you know, a lot of people out there agree with it, that you would have pushed a little harder. Okay. Well, we're, we're here tonight. This is where the vote takes place. I this understand. is where the actual well, debate takes place. Tonight, you still have the opportunity, okay. Mr. Wozniak, you still have the opportunity to state your preference for one method or the other tonight. Well, it's your method. I'm okay with what we got a consensus. If you okay. want to get yours in, when it comes time, you need to push harder, I think. Okay, so we're still talking about the consensus amendment. Yeah, I have a, I have a question about the consensus. I, I just want to summarize something about the owner occupied. So I think the way this reads, the owner occupied does not count in the 600, Correct. so they don't have to worry about that. Mm -hmm. But I think they do have to have an inspection and they do have to have the septic. Yes. And it doesn't really say anything you know steve said something about four people and the owner occupied it doesn't really say anything about people so whatever the people is and the owner occupied is the same it is for anybody right occupancy is only based on whether you're septic or yeah Those, yeah that's the distinction of yeah it has nothing to do with owner occupied or not -occupied. yeah that's that's what i meant to say it, the only thing i thought of uh, and i guess this is clear i'm not positive Okay, so let's say it's owner-occupied. We're talking about how many people you can have. But there's one or two people live. Let's say there's a husband and wife living there. Those two have to count, right? I mean, yep. is that clear? I mean, is that... Well, it's, um... I mean, it just never even comes up in any way, really. I, I just wanted to make sure, because obviously it's logical. They would well, count as two bring, people. bring up fair point because the occupancy limits are couched in terms of guests yeah but in that case you have one or two or whatever already living there right so, yeah 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 no <laughs> yeah there it is That's guests in their own up. home <laughs> No, they're well, not. I'll, I'll That's what I'm saying. So then they right. don't count. Right. Yes, yeah. gentlemen, the gentlemen, count. gentlemen. Right. Mr. If Kelly, there is a question. It needs to be lined out for sure. Okay. In so 
we don't need to have a debate about what it means. We need to make sure it says what is intended to be adopted. So, yeah. so. Uh, it, it, my, my, my recommendation would be uh, if don't let that issue get us away from this consensus approach and then we can go back and look at that further. Sure. Yeah. We need to, I agree. As with your other situations. Okay, this is only the first reading. Okay, you can go back and change yeah. it. Yeah. Okay, anybody else? Okay, roll call vote. Okay, this uh, is on the con adopting the consensus amendment. To item C. Right. Councilmember Snow. I'm sorry. Um, in all of this discussion, we are voting on just on the consensus amendment. Correct. That's it. To replace the original C. Yes. It's an amendment to C, which is a amendment. substitute. Right. right. No. All right. Councilmember Flynn. Yes. Wozniak. No. Wilms? No. Fowler? Yes. Burke? Yes. Mayor, you may choose to vote in favor if you so desire. Yes, because that's what we agreed to. Yeah. So the consensus amendment okay. is, totally, is totally. the proposal is amended, Mayor. And so now um, it, it, it's still in first reading. You have to read it again. And I believe Mr. Snow has a motion he wants to make. I'm trying to direct traffic. I'm not trying to tell you what yep. to do. I just know there's a lot of things happening. All right, Mr. Snow, what's up? Thank you, sir. Well, we've heard a lot of we've heard a lot of discussion here tonight. A tremendous amount of discussion. I think there's a lot of issues that we have not resolved as yet. Um, a lady brought up an issue tonight. That I think that hasn't been resolved, and that's a density uh, in a particular area. So I am proposing, and another more part is the economic impact. So we've got sales tax revenue to consider. We've got A&P tax to consider. We've got property values to consider um, and property taxes. We've got uh, investment properties that uh, to be considered. Um, we've got people who bought properties in Bella Vista whenever they may have been a two-bedroom house or a two-bedroom septic, but through um, prior to their purchase of that home, that home has been expanded so now it's a four bedroom house on a two bedroom system. So I think there's a couple of things that we need to, uh, that we need to explore further. So I'm making a motion that all of the short term rental ordinances be tabled until we have the opportunity to do an impact study, an impact study, um, a, a impact study on this septic system issue. Um, it, it continues to keep coming up and we still haven't come to to a resolution. So I'm making a motion that all of the, all of the short term rental ordinances, if I can make that motion on all of them, so that they all be tabled until we have a, an impact, a, a, a economic impact study completed. I think it'd be better to have a date, wouldn't it? Can, can I, well, no, when, as long as we have some event. So I, I'm not trying to make assumptions about your thought process here. Would you envision a report being made and that you would want it to be tabled until after that report was received? Yes. The first available meeting, regular meeting after that report is received? Yes. Okay. So, Mayor, that would motion would apply to the current item, which is item C, item D, item G, and that's it. How about A? It's already, you've already done that, so it wouldn't, uh, wouldn't affect that one. We have to table I, it I next month? It's already tabled indefinitely. Yeah. So yeah. We can do that. that one's out of it. That's out. Okay. So that, that motion, Mayor, we That's the table of uses, is what I'm talking about. Yeah. Oh, um, no. That, yeah. The, the, uh, excuse me. No, that would not include the zoning. Requirement that would not include a. I was thinking you talking about the no. Problem. So I'm that'll be back. The last thing I wanted is bring confusion. In. Right. So it's that'll be second does reading not next month. A. It does not right. involve an a, a at all. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and it does not involve B because that's on the. Because that's that's already, that's that's already, already tabled already. indefinitely. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So C, D, and D, G, G. 
All right. So Mr. Snow, that's, that is a motion? Yes, sir. Okay, do I have a second? I'll second just for discussion purposes. Okay. Okay, so now let's go for discussion. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, my, my, my vote will be no. Uh, we've spent an inordinate amount of time on this. Uh, I don't know, economic uh, impact study. I mean, I don't even exactly know what that means. I don't know who's going to do that, uh, quite frankly. Jerry, you going to head it up? You going to lead the committee no, to, to put that whole thing together? I think we'd have to have somebody up there. A professional group. We're going to hire a consultant from the outside. We'd have to hire someone to do that uh, to have an accurate and uh, uh, professional response to it. It'd have to be a, a consultant or somebody qualified to make such a study. What's your time frame? Oh, I, now that I as uh, you don't know as the motion as my motion stated, it would be um, as soon as that study could be would be completed. Uh, I don't have any idea as to how long that would take. Okay. It basically, I view it as ambiguous. I mean, we don't know where we're going with that. We, we've spent a year and a half listening to feedback again, researching, homework, editing, massaging, listening to the city council. This is coming in like at the, the, the uh, 23rd hour, you know, at 11.59. It's, this, it makes no sense to me. It's time to move move forward with what we have. If we don't go to third and final reading tonight, that's fine. But we have two more uh, readings after this, uh, I, and I don't really see the really the benefit of it. Uh, the benefit of it is to provide information that we don't have. It's to delay the conversation even further is what it's about. Mayor Christie, uh, I'm kind of thrown off a little bit by the uh, – impact study and, and the cost of that and, and the process for that. I, I think uh, a, a better motion would have been to table it in recognition of the fact that in 68 days from now, we have a new mayor, uh, at least two new members of city council, perhaps three. And we would be passing this, if we're staying on schedule, we'll be passing this come December. And uh, and kind of rolling it over to the next version of the city council. So not sure why we'd attach it to an impact study of some, uh, I also don't have a feel for that. It wasn't discussed in the work session. It's not something that, uh, that I feel support for. John, do you have anything? Well, I, you made a good point that if we feel like we need a little more time and we're just on first reading, I don't see a need to, you know, have some kind of special study or anything uh, on the economic side. The, the dollars that were quoted, which I think are accurate, uh, according to my math, that's like 5%. I'm talking about the sales and use tax. It's 5% of our total sales and use tax. Mm -hmm. 143 divided by 3.3 million. Mm -hmm. So, I, I mean, there's an economic impact sure. to pretty much everything you do, but... Uh, you know, 5% of the revenue, and it's not all going away, so. Clary, anything? No. No? Jim? No, I'm good. Uh, you know, before we go down the path, so uh, Taylor just provided this to me, and I think I've seen it before. It's National League of Cities. Short-term re uh, rental regulations, a guide for local governments. Uh, and just, you know, the bullet points of it. Uh, prevent the loss of rental housing. And I think that means converting long-term rentals to short-term rentals. Uh, slow or prevent the overgrowth of uh, STRs. Combat displacement. Uh, preserve the residential quality of neighborhoods. Balance the needs of, and rights of property owners and neighbors. Uh, ensure health and safety of guests and residents, capture tax revenue, support tourism in a balanced way, and allow for economic gain for residents. So essentially, our, our the, I say our, the ordinance that has my name on it basically touches on every one of those points. 
and it doesn't say anything in here about doing an economic uh, impact study, you know, before you consider. I mean, I, I don't even, I'm just trying to think in my mind what that would encapsulate, even like how you would, how you would be able to do that. But we've gone this far down the road and it's it, we need to keep moving forward. Well, if it's anything like the impact study we did before with Tischler Bice, that took four or five months and cost us forty thousand dollars. But I don't know if this is the same I level or not. I think you're talking about something. Yeah, yeah. that's different. That was I mean, that was the pure point, impact. Yeah. If, I don't know. if go ahead, Moyer. Go ahead. No. Larry, go. I I guess the comment that I have is I think I think it's uh, definitive that short-term rentals provide an impact to the city in terms of revenue. There's no question about it. Uh, I think the, we would be uh, short-sighted to say that it didn't have an impact on us. Um, uh, the reality is, is that we have situations where owners may be irres irresponsible in terms of how they manage the property, and it results in conflicts with the adjacent neighbors who are permanent residents here. Uh, and so some form of regulation is warranted. Uh, the question is, to what extent do we regulate? And, and that's where the balance is that I think is, is a difficult thing for all of us. I think uh, Mr. Fowler addressed the National League of Cities, and they're looking at cities across the nation about the issues that uh, are of concern in every state, um, notwithstanding what we have here in Bella Vista, so. Okay. It, it, and you, you talk about a, a, about the impact study and what it would consist of. We've heard people talk tonight, number one, about the uh, concern about the density. Uh, we haven't addressed that in any manner as to um, what a, like in particular, we have one particular lady uh, has a, um, her lives in a condo and she's now been surrounded by short-term rentals. Um, she's in a position now of wanting to, she's been a resident of Bella Vista for some 20 something years now she wants to leave because she's surrounded. We've, we've, we've uh, eliminated the, the sandwiching uh, provision that was originally discussed. Uh, we've heard people here tonight talk about the, the economic impact to them and to their families. Um, these are responsible uh, short term rental owners who try to, to uh, operate their properties in a responsible manner. So now then we're going to punish them because of three or four different individuals or three or four different property owners, um, which sometimes seems to be the case. We punish everybody for the, for the, uh, for the actions of a few, but, um, uh, the property values, um, what does a short term rental or a number of short term rentals in the neighborhood, what does that do? if anything, to the property values of those permanent residents who live there. What does that do to them? Does it, does it affect them in any manner? Um, do we need to go back and look at this as uh, from the standpoint of, again, from uh, density in the neighborhood, from uh, a variety of other areas other than simply what we have, uh, uh, how, how we're approaching it now? Um, sales say, tax revenue. You know, I, I would suggest to you, I think what you're really describing is tabling it for I don't know how long. But I think you're talking about what uh, Mr. Kelly talked about, you know, when we did with the septic, which was something I mentioned many months ago. Yes. Is getting back to what this gentleman said is, look, let's get all parties together and talk about exactly what you're trying to, I think, expound upon which is what's the impact on the residents, what's the impact on the, on the STR owners, how do we make it better, et cetera, et cetera. Is that, is that what I'm really hearing? Yes, I think that's, I think that's a good summary, summary of what, you're, what I'm trying to get at, yes. Okay, so then you've already put in there in your, in your resolution, or excuse me, your motion, is that you want to wait until such time as an impact study is complete I'm not sure that's what you're really saying. I think what you're really saying is until there is some sort of ordinance that everybody can stand up, all the various stakeholders can stand up and say, 
I support it. Similar as to what we did on the septic. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> okay, I think that's what I'm hearing. That, so that's not a workable motion to take. Uh, and what, Mr. The, the motion that's on the table. Right, is to table. Is, right. No, but that motion is workable. But if it's a motion until we have people that agree on a. I, no, I think I think <laughs> what I'm suggesting is let's not pass this resolution if someone is willing to bring a motion to the table talking about what I just described and then we can talk about that uh, we can do that I'll tell you it's going to be a road to nowhere well, I mean and, until until we decide to completely okay. ignore uh, the Arkansas Department of Health guidelines on septic permits and the per persons allowed per bedroom until we decide to completely ignore that not pay any attention to it turn our back on it there's, there's a group of short-term rental owners that will never, ever accept anything we do okay. until that happens. Let's have that discussion in a few minutes. Jerry has a resolution to table. He has a, See, he has a motion. Excuse, Excuse me. me. He has a motion on the table, and we've got a second, to table C, D, and G. Until such time as, a as there is an impact study. regular meeting. Right. After a report is received from an economic study okay. regarding and, the topics of these ordinances. And I think the I think the residents, I think the people that are short term rental owners as well as other residents would have an opportunity to participate in that study. Okay, that's I, fine. Last comment. I, I think we overloaded the motion. It's confusing. A simple motion would have been table until January. That I could get behind this. I'm it's convoluted and just misstated yeah okay mm -hmm. but that that that's the way that he wants it. okay uh, understood where was the second the second uh, was. Was. okay now if everybody's agreeable let's vote on this okay okay Wayne okay this is on mr. snow's motion uh, mr. snow yes mr. Flynn no Mr. Wozniak? Yes. Mr. Wilms? No. Mr. Fowler? No. Mr. Burke? No. It, it fails. Okay. So now we're still on item C, as was amended by the consensus amendment. We're still on first reading. Somebody wants to make another motion. Well, uh, there's, there's still I, another amendment. Oh, there's two yeah, there's another amendment. That or okay. Whatever it's, will well, I'd like to move the Flynn Amendment. If somebody seconds it, I'll explain what it's about. I'll second. You gonna okay. read it? Mr. Wilms will second. Okay. It's in the packet. Um, the the point of this motion is uh, some of the uh, residents who are short term owners express concern when we're having a maximum number that they might get beat out that uh, well let's say 600 for example which was in uh, the proposal we've been looking at they might get beat out out people from outside the city and out corporations from out of state might you know there'd be a rush and all 600 would be taken up so the point of my amendment is that people who are citizens of Bella Vista and are short-term owners would they'd have a 30-day head start for the first 30 days only residents of uh, Bella Vista I think you used the term citizens actually in the amendment uh, could apply so that they wouldn't be I don't think they're gonna get beat out anyway I don't think we're gonna hit that number uh, right off but it's to make sure that local people don't get you know many of whom are already operating uh, don't get uh, beat out on the maximum number that's that's all it does okay Jim I would like if we're gonna do that instead of 30 days make it 60 days okay well, we give can them come enough back time and, okay we can come back to that later and then well but anyhow the reasoning being I can listen long lose my thought because you want to give them more time? Well, I, I want to go from you know, 30 to 60. 
so the people here, and when they apply, all they have to do is apply to be counted in the original number. Yeah. They don't have to go through the whole process. Once you put your name in the pot, you're good you're there. for your 60 days. O right. Only if you're a Bella Vista resident? I don't No, I, I think it should be wide open. Okay. That's not what the amendment is. No, I know. He wants okay. to keep it local. Right. So there's a motion. Is there a second? Yep. Yeah, it there's was moved by John and seconded by Larry. Yeah. Okay. Then Bye. discussion? Yeah, by all means. It seems absolutely useless to me. I, we have 480 active STRs today. The cap is either 600 or 750. It, it's useless. Okay. There's Anybody no else? there's no run on on permits. Jason, I guess I mean you reviewed this, right? I mean your opinion is this is legal. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna enter into my opinion about this. Your opinion. <laughs> no, 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 no. What? Not what we should do. <laughs> Put putting Bella Vista residents in line in front of. It's if, what the proposal that Mr. Flynn has brought forward is legal if you want to do it. Okay. I want to know. Larry, one question that I have is uh, is whether you have 30 days or 60 days, and you're looking at the, the local uh, uh, citizens of Bella Vista as having priority. The question is, when does it count? Does it count when they just file a paper that says, here's my application, but it's not complete? So do you count them as a part of that? It says applications. Or not? When the applications does, are accepted. Does it have to be a complete ap application to be satisfy this goal here of 30 or 60 days? So that needs to be clarified, I think. Well, they you have just have made application if it's an incomplete application not completed an application. Okay, it's so an it has to be completed so in the is, package. It would not be accepted by the city if it were incomplete. Okay. Now well, what do you call incomplete though? Are you talking the inspection and everything else or just get your paperwork? Uh, the, 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 amend, the amendment the uh, consensus section. ordinance out identifies what a complete application consists of. Right. And the, the section three and four yeah. talk about yeah. what would yeah. have to be. Okay. Any more discussion before we vote on the Flynn Amendment? Okay, let's go, Wayne. Okay, roll call vote on this second amendment. Mr. Burke? No. Mr. Fowler? Yes. Mr. Wilms? Yes. Mr. Wozniak? Yes. Mr. Flynn? Yes. Mr. Snow? No. That one passes. Okay. Passes. Now we have another amendment. Well, we have the question about the 30 days or 60 days. No, we just passed 30. We just passed 30. We just passed 30. That's right. So the question is, do we want to extend that to 60 days? All, all proposed not? amendments have to be in writing in order to be in order. Okay. So Try it next month. It, it would have to be next month in order to so right now change it's at, it some at, more, which at you can days. certainly do. Yeah. Okay. So, Mayor, if it's in order, I have another motion. Let's go through Mr. Fowler's amendment. And then okay, we'll we got. Back. Okay, we're still back to amendments. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Doug, okay. All this amendment this? is is to clean up some language. The intent of uh, Section Five uh, occupancy limits and restrictions. Uh, we were setting down going through this. I'm talking about CDS, Taylor, Megan, uh, Ruben, Doug, and. It, uh, in parentheses, says, or as required by the Arkansas Department of Health, because we're allowing three guests per bedroom. If someone in the future that works in CDS is reading this, when you say as required by the Arkansas Depart Department of Health on-site septic permit, it says two bedroom. That permit uh, is associated with uh, the parameters of two people per bedroom which means that would kind of override, if you will, the three guests per bedroom. So we just changed the language. Uh, we took out the or as required by the Arkansas Department of Health, and we said the fire code and, if applicable, the Arkansas Department of Health on-site septic permit for the property, whichever is less. That's to determine the bedrooms, right? On this, it is determined it's on the permit that is issued. So it's basically just cleaning up the language of that. Doesn't doesn't uh, change the intent at all. I drafted this to clarify the yeah. intent of the, of what, the way it says now. Basically. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. So that's all it is. Yeah, I'd like to make a motion to uh, approve this amendment. Second. Okay. Any more discussion? 
Okay, Wayne. Okay, <clears throat> Council Member Snow. No. Council Member Flynn. Yes. Wozniak. Yes. Wilms. Yes. Fowler. Yes. Burke. Yes. Terry. Five point. Okay, Jerry, you had something else. Mayor, I'm going to try to um, to uh, word this motion to uh, to kind of comply with your suggestion, in that we table these. Um, short-term rental ordinances until January until a group uh, consisting of short-term rental owners, citizens, um, be uh, put together to, be put right to right. come up, no? That's just a motion, it's not a Okay. To uh, come up with a draft ordinance that will be acceptable by everyone so that we can get away from all of this. Well, there's a problem with it because you're saying January or, or January and. Please, well, January or, and table well, until January. You can't have it both ways. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm trying to, I, if I'm not saying it right, correct me, because I'm not trying to put words in your mouth. Okay. You're moving the table until January. Yes. With the intent that that would give time for citizen, further citizen input and committees to make a recommendation. It wouldn't require it, but it would provide an opportunity. Provide an opportunity. I, a number of people have uh, volunteered tonight to serve on that uh, a committee to uh, to try to resolve all this issue um, and come up with an ordinance that would be acceptable by everyone. So the, the key would, would be to, to table C, D, and G until the January regular meeting. Yes, sir. Okay. So you have that as a formal motion, sir? Yes, sir. Okay, do I have a second? Second. I'm sorry, was that you, Mr. Steve? Uh, Mr. Burke? Okay, discussion. Well, the sad part is well, you're going to get something worked out, but Jerry says that everybody's going to agree with that's a pipe dream. Mm -hmm. You're going to end up with, you're going to have to give quite a bit on both sides to make it happen. You're not going to get both sides to go because you've got the live-ins, you got the folks who, if we take them down from 10 or 12 people or 14 or 16, depending on Brendan, who's going to take them down to six or eight, nobody's going to be happy. You're going to have to hope for a consensus and try for the best, but good luck on that. And if you do make a committee, it's got to be small enough so it doesn't get out of hand, because six of us can't get along, so what are you going to do with 10 or 12? <laughs> so. No, the only thing, it's, it, it'll be a convoluted mess. I mean, good luck. You know, if, it, if everybody thinks you're going to get all these people, like, in a room and you're going to come to one agreement and everybody's going to, you know, you're going to see unicorns and rainbows and every, you're going to see kumbaya, it's not going to happen. Yeah. And we have already, like, had a special session. Then we had another two-hour hour session with six people uh, last Monday, okay? And I thought we would come in here, not necessarily pass this wholly tonight, that we'd be in a pretty good spot. Okay, where are we? So this group that you think, you, good luck, you better have the police there, you know, because your people are gonna have words, trust me. I don't, are you uh, even American? I don't agree. What? I, I don't what? agree. What? Hey, hey, is this no, guy, you're out of order. what'd you call me? Uh, 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 I said, are you even American? Oh, good grief, give me a break. Uh, Nathaniel, <laughs> Nathaniel, <laughs> Nathaniel. Please That's remove enough. him from the room. Sure, Please. Okay. Anybody else want to discuss? Uh, Mayor, I, I still think that we can put together a group that will, a uh, reasonable, I don't think that people are totally unreasonable. I think we can put together a group that will come up with a consensus. I mean, Mr. Wozniak doesn't think we can, but I think we can. I have confidence in the people that we're dealing with, as well as the citizens. I see a lady sitting right in the front row who has already uh, volunteered to uh, I see two ladies sitting on the front row. Both have already volunteered to help, and I think both of them have good ideas and would make uh, uh, excellent. Uh... So you're going to run with this, are you? Yes. Okay. All right. Mayor Christie. Yes, sir. I, I seconded the motion because I wanted to hear from other members of city council about the take on the fact that there will be new members of city council in 68 days. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not hearing 
that that's a concern or an interest of anybody else on city council. So um, doesn't really matter. We'll, yeah. They'll have to get up to speed and go from there. Right. The world doesn't stop when some of us aren't here anymore. Right. Even though we like to think it will, but that's after right. we're gone, we're gone. That's right. Hmm. Politicians come and go. Okay. Let's vote on it. Okay. This is on moving to January item C, D, and G. Correct? The intent. Tabling. Mm -hmm. That's the intent. All right. Councilmember Wilms. Abstain, no. <laughs> Did you abstain? No, I didn't abstain. What's your vote? My vote would be yes. Was. Did, oh, okay, yes. Flynn. No. Fowler. No. Burke. Yes. Snow. Yes. It carries. Okay. So items C, D, G on the agenda this evening are tabled until January 2023. Okay. 2023. That moves us now into new business. Where the first is an ordinance requiring a city issued permit for repair or replacement of on site septic systems or parts thereof, establishing penalties for violations and for other purposes. First reading. Mr. Snow, this is yours. Mayor, I would like to withdraw that ordinance until it can be um, further research. I have come to I have come to determine that it uh, probably needs some work. So I would like to withdraw that at this time. Table, table indefinitely. Table Sorry, indefinitely. Okay. I have a motion on the floor to table indefinitely. Second. Mr. Burke, thank you. Anybody else? I'd just like to comment on it. I, I mean, I, he's going to give it some work anyway, but if, if we're going to do something like this, I don't think there should be a charge for the permit. And I'm not, he's got a pretty big fine on it right now. I really don't want it to be punitive. You know, I want to encourage people to work on their septic system and let us know about it, basically. Okay. But I know he's going to work on it anyway, so. Well, this is, this is only the first reading. So if you want to amend it, you can do it for November. Anybody else? I thought it was withdrawing. Wayne? But this is a motion to table indefinitely. Yep. Correct. Okay. Councilmember Snow. Yes. Flynn. Yes. Wozniak. Yes. Wilms. Yes. Burke. Yes. Fowler. Yes. Carried. See, by golly, we can get a consensus on something. Okay, we'll move to item F on the agenda. Yeah. Amending the Bella Vista zoning ordinance and map to rezone property described in rezoning petition number 2022-45549, county parcel number 16-70278-002, from R1, residential single family district, to RO, which is residential office district. Staff is requesting that we move to third and final. If you remember from the work session, this is the piece of land that is up on the cemetery road, right beside Tom Frederick's house. Tom owns the land. So moved. Second. So this, it, there has to be a motion to suspend the rules and go to third and final. Yeah, on right. This? That's the motion. Okay. <laughs> 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 All right. So Mr. Wilms has moved that, that we suspend the rules and move to third and final reading. And who is the second? Was. Was? Was. Okay. Any discussion on it? Okay. You're voting on moving, excuse me, on suspending the rules. Okay. Councilmember Burke. Yes. Fowler. Yes. Wilms. Yes. Wozniak. Yes. Flynn. Yes. Snow. Yes. Carry. Okay. Third and final reading. Amending the Bella Vista zoning ordinance and map to rezone property described in rezoning petition number 2022-45549, county parcel number 16-70278-002 from R1 residential single family district to RO, which is residential office district. 
And that was the third and final. Motion, motion to, to approve. Second. Any discussion? Wayne? All right. <clears throat> Council Member Wilms? Yes. Burke? Yes. Fowler? Yes. Snow? Yes. Flynn? Yes. Wozniak? Yes. Carried 6 0. Okay, thank you. We move to item G, which has been tabled to January. H is accepting the financial audit report presented by Landmark PA, uh, PLC for the year ending December 31st, 2021. There was a copy in your mailbox in City Hall. Um, it is a clean and good audit. Anybody have any questions? If not, I'd make a motion, motion to approve. To approve. Mr. Second. Okay, that was Mr. Fowler, and who second? JW. Chief, okay. I need to, for the minutes, I need to make sure that we note that there was uh, a finding which has been regular on our audits and which the council's dealt with and knows well about, which is relatively minor regarding segregation of duties right. in the ambulance billing area. Uh, I just, we just need to make sure. We said there was nothing in there, but that was in there. Just well, that was in there. But we provided uh, Landmark with a plan, and they have accepted it. And frankly, since we outsourced the ambulance billing, um, we haven't had a problem with that, which is good. Okay, Wayne. Ready for the vote? Okay. <clears throat> Councilmember Wozniak. Yes. Wilms. Yes. Fowler. Yes. Burke. Yes. Snow. Yes. Flynn. <laughs> Yes. Carries. Next is a resolution authorizing the mayor and city clerk to enter into a contract with emergency vehicle specialist EDS pursuant to an HGAC uh, cooperative purchasing agreement for the purchase of eight self-contained breathing apparatus and associated equipment in an amount not to exceed $95,002.34 for use by the fire department. This is in his budget. And chief, this is uh, just part of our normal getting rid of the old packs and bringing in the new okay so moved second, second. mr wilms who second was okay any discussion right correct okay, council member snow yes flynn yes burke yes wilms yes wozniak yes fowler yes carried six zero the next resolution is establishing the residential and commercial rates for solid waste trash uh, collection in the city. Um, I would note that Republic wanted a 16% increase and we got it down to about 7.5%, uh, which is 97 cents additional per month. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Mr. Wilms, Mr. Wozniak, any discussion? Wayne. All right. <clears throat> Councilmember Wozniak. Yes. Burke. Yes. Snow. Yes. Fowler. Yes. Wilms. Yes. Flynn. Yes. Carried 6 0. Thank you. The next is a resolution authorizing and directing payment of a one time $1,500 stipend to all qualified city police and fire dispatchers from previously appropriated and budgeted funds in the 2022 police department budget. This was originally uh, suggested by Mr. Snow. Uh, and at that time he wanted to take it out of our reserves. Um, that was defeated and instead this would come out of the chief's 2022 budget. He says that he has the ability to be able to handle it. Is there a, is there a motion to approve? No, wait, hold on, hold on. I got okay. a proposed amendment. Okay. Yeah, um, you know, I'm always in favor of uh, compensating employees, you know, to, to the degree that we can, but, you know, taking a step back, just remember that uh, this $1,500 stipend for dispatchers um, came out of uh, a uh, 
proposal made by Asa Hutchinson, you know, the governor, to provide uh, police officers, you know, across the state of Arkansas, $5,000 bonus, you know, for their service. Uh, however, you know, they didn't include the dispatchers for whatever reason. I don't know if those conversations took place or not. But then uh, when that did happen, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Snow felt like leaving the dispatchers out was the wrong thing to do and really kind of brought what was a state decision uh, and made it kind of like a local issues that the d dispatchers were not included. Um, and like I said, it was, it was turned down at first because we do have city employees, uh, you know, across the balance of the city watching what's going on. And, uh, you know, probably a lot of them, they're saying, well, why not me? I'm, I'm value I should be valued as well. And I feel the same way. Um, I think our dispatchers, you know, I take nothing away from them. I know that they provide a valuable service uh, and, you know, they're valued by the police department and I, and I get all of that. Uh, however, I, I, I have been burned a couple times. I'm talking about how I feel personally about comments made about some of the other departments uh, and minimizing the role of some of those employees in those departments. And I'm talking about streets, I'm talking about CDS or library, human services, whatever, whatever it may be, the comments were directed more at one or, or two of the departments. But I personally believe that every single employee across the city plays a vital role in the effective uh, functionality of our city. So if we're going to award our dispatchers uh, out of our uh, city coffers, I think it is only right and fair that we do that across, across the entire city. Uh, you gotta remember like the streets department uh, when it's uh, 105 degrees, what? It's right here. It's I'm, I'm, what you're talking about. It's right here, taking everybody in, in, uh, I understand, into consideration. I understand that, but I'm giving some rationale. The uh, street department people, you know, this this summer they're out in 100, 103, 105 degree weather. Uh, you know, taking care of sight lines, putting down pavement, uh, clearing out uh, uh, our drainage ditches and things like that. Uh, they're also out in the wintertime, you know, during the snow and the ice. They're spending the night at the street department so they can be in the vehicles and out all night long putting down sand, salt, clearing the roads for emergency vehicles, you know, so they can get through, uh, cleaning them off so people can get to work or get to the doctor or whatever that might be. And it, it doesn't largely go recognized. It does by some people, but it's kind of one of those hidden, hidden benefits, that, you know, that, that these employees provide. CDS department, for example, uh, tonight, here they are, you know, this meeting's going until whatever time. They also have work sessions they have to attend at night, planning session, work sessions they have to attend at night, uh, planning uh, session uh, meetings that are all in the evening. Uh, you know, we're short-staffed a lot. These people have to step up and cover um, th those responsibilities uh, when the other people aren't there to do it. And I could go on and on and on. I'm going to leave it there, but I'm just saying, if we're going to provide $1,500 for the... Uh, uh, dispatchers for the city then let's make it fair and equitable across the city now i want you to know i peter's going to speak to this in just a second but uh i checked with uh the cds and i also checked with the street departments to see if they had these monies in their budget i didn't talk to the library i didn't talk to legal and i didn't talk to hr i was looking at their budgets and it appeared to me that they had the money to do it but evidently a couple of departments might be a little bit short and being able to provide that fifteen hundred dollars so we might have to propose a rev resolution maybe next month table this until next month and then uh figure out a way to move away uh, move around funds so we can uh, provide those employees with the fifteen hundred dollars as well the only way i could think of doing it was for audit trail purposes to have a resolution that would move funds from somebody who can afford to give it to the others so we've got the trail well if you recall usually in december uh, you all That's true. consider a resolution yeah. to amend the budget to permit interdepartmental transfer so long as the total city budget is not exceeded, uh, exceeded. right and so uh can't presuppose that the council would do that again, but if sure. it did that, it would take care of it. So you could go ahead and pay them, and as long as you knew, you would probably be needing to do this one back in. But there's no guarantee that we'll get a, a passage of that. But you're right, Mayor Christie. We didn't have the opportunity to discuss this in work session. Uh, could I ask what is the total cost of this amendment, net of 
for Mr. Snow's amendment. Uh, CDS, how many people do you say, Doug? About se seven. And it was about 20 for the streets department. Yeah, and of course, the, res the resolution doesn't have any kind of timeline. It's just it's it's going to be whoever's qualifies on uh, the, when this is passed. And dispatchers didn't have a timeline either, right? Nope. nope. Okay. I'm 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 not against the idea, but I I would like to see some math put to it rather than us try to do it here on the fly. We ought to have here's the total cost of this. Here's how the city's going to fund it, and then I think it's worthy of consideration. John, yeah, I think that's a good idea. I'd just like to know how many employees it is and what the cost is. Yep, no idea. And that's fine. Um, like, like I said, I've made the assumption that a couple of departments had the money in their funds just from looking at the uh, financial report that was provided um, today, I guess. So, I mean, I'd be willing to put this off if we could table the dispatchers for uh, one month so we could put, put the whole entire package together. Dispatchers already have the funds. You said so. You, you're talking about everybody else. Well, so does streets. Said he, chief said he had the money in his budget. For so does streets, and so does CDS. Yeah, but that's and, a separate. And the other departments ordinance. are really, really small. They're, they're not a very that. high number of people. But you want to put the whole thing off when the chief is all set to go. Uh, and I'll he's got the money. His is all set to go. Why drag that part out? Just pick the rest of it up. Okay, Mr. Snow. Mayor, I would propose, uh, I mean, this the original uh, resolution was to uh, uh, support the dispatchers and the, uh, the part that they play in, in law enforcement, which the, uh, the governor's, um, his uh, stipend for law enforcement officers were for law enforcement uh, dispatchers. They, uh, they perform no other, they perform a job like no other job in the city, but uh, and the original proposal was to to uh, uh, reward them for their support of law enforcement. Okay. So I, I do not object to Mr. Fowler's um, amendment or what he wants to accomplish. I have no objection to that. But I think we should go ahead with the the proposed resolution regarding dispatchers, and he can bring his back at a later time. So, Doug, let's work together. Okay, I'll bring it back together. next month. Yeah, and we'll bring it back next month. So you're withdrawing okay. the amendment? Yes. There was no motion. To yeah, there was no motion. No motion there. Um, okay. So we're back to the original okay. one for dispatchers. Any motion thoughts? to approve. Second. Mr. Wilms. Wozniak. Wozniak Wilms. Wilms. Okay. <clears throat> Councilmember Snow. Yes. Flynn. Yes. Wozniak. Yes. Wilms? Yes. Fowler? Yes. Burke? Yes. Carried 6 0. Okay, the next resolution approving the Northwest Arkansas Razorback Greenway Operations and Management Plan. This is a plan that has been reduced from over 80 pages down to about 20. It's essentially saying the same thing. There are some changes as to the signage that will be on the, on the Razorback Greenway but it was more to clear up 80 pages of gobbledygook and put it down into plain English so that everybody could figure out just what they were supposed to do in all the cities. So all the cities are passing something <laughs> like this and the POA has also signed because we're on a 50-50 uh, maintenance agreement with them. Is there any discussion at all? Move that it be approved. Second. Second. Mr. Snow and Mr. Flynn. All right. Councilmember Burke? Yes. Fowler? Yes. Wilms? Yes. Wozniak? Yes. Flynn? Yes. Snow? Yes. Carried 6 0. Okay, the next resolution is awarding bid and authorizing the mayor and city clerk to enter into a contract with First Star Exteriors in an amount not to exceed $147,703 for roof, gutter, and downspout replacement at the Bella Vista Public Library and amending the 20. 22 budget. So folk, folks, this is how the library works. And this is not uncommon. There is a private Bella Vista Library Foundation. They own the building and they own the land. But in a agreement that was entered into soon after we became a city, 
the city took over the operations and maintenance. So when something fails, such as HVAC, roof, then we pick up the maintenance for it. We also purchase the books. We also pay the salaries and the benefits to the people that work in there. So we have a problem with the roof. It was first put on in 1997 when the building was built. I know absolutely nothing about metal roofs other than they tell me that the seams are splitting and because they were put on in some fashion that was used in 1997 that nobody uses anymore. So now we have water that's coming down and, and it's getting into the actual library. As you know, water flows wherever it's convenient and can find a place to go. Um, so we brought in some companies for bid. This is not the lowest bid, but the other bids did not include downspouts and gutters, which we had asked for. Plus, this bid has a 40-year warranty. The lowest one is a 30-year warranty. This is a better deal for the taxpayers. So that's where this is coming from. Make a motion to approve. Second. Mr. Fowler and Mr. Flynn. Yes, sir. I have a question, Mr. Mayor and, and mm -hmm. Mr. Kelly, uh, Attorney Kelly, and, and that is that in looking at the in looking at the bid tabulation, we have a bidder that has a lower total bid amount than the one we're proposing to award it to, and we have not formally, um, I guess, uh, discredited uh, the merit of that bid. Um, or my, understand, my understanding from Mike Button. This was that the low number was non-responsive, that it did not provide uh, some of the information that was requested in the bid, right. and, and for that reason, then it, it goes to the next. Bid. And I would not disagree. He described that at the work session. Mm -hmm. I, I, I understand, and I and I do recognize that he did explain that to us. Um, my question for you is the legality of us uh, uh, awarding it to something other than the low bid when we haven't identified in this motion the disqualification of the lowest bidder. We, don't have to do we never we do don't that. have to do that. No. Okay. We don't All right. Have to take the lowest bid either. I mean, the record is clear as to why it was not the. It's the and lowest qualified bid, and so it became unqualified when it was not. So, so do we? Do, so do we say lowest qualified bid in our motion? That's what the law requires. Um, that it be the lowest qualified bid, um, but the wording of the resolution is sufficient. I can tell you that, and it says. I think it probably just says uh, it doesn't say it's the lowest bid at all. It just it awards the bid to them in the amount of money uh, and authorizes the contract. And the reason for that is because it was the lowest qualified bid. So if you look in the memorandum, Mr. Wilms, guarantee roofing is the lowest bidder for the total bid package. The difference between the total bid packages is $3,000. $963. We believe it is in the city's best interest to complete the metal gutters and downsprouts at the same time as the metal roof replacement. Understand. I, I know what the memo says. I, re I read that. Mr. Mayor, I'm just wondering if the resolution that we are passing here needs to at all refer to any of that. No. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Ready for a vote? Okay. Councilmember Burke. Yes. Fowler. Yes. Snow. Yes. Wozniak. Yes. Flynn. Yes. Wilms. Yes. Carried 6 0. Okay. Next resolution authorizing the mayor and city clerk to enter into a guaranteed maximum price amendment for grading work only to the contract with Kleinert Construction Management Inc. for the construction management services related to the construction of a fire training facility in the amount of $522,203.65. This is, you may have seen the activity on the north end of town, off 71 um, on the west side, just north of where the turnoff to the waste plant is, uh, the sewer plant. Yeah. That is land that we have purchased from Cooper, and that is the third of three projects that were in the bond that was approved by the voters in March of 2020 is to put in a fire training tower so we don't have to move our equipment and people to other cities. And then if something goes terribly wrong here, I've got equipment and, and plant and they're in the wrong town. 
plus this we're being told by ISO which also governs the fire rating which affects your fire insurance unless you're with State Farm um, should lower us from a four to a three which hopefully as we did when we came from a six to a four it'll give us better fire insurance rates so this is being paid inside the bond it's a GMP it's a guaranteed maximum price it cannot go over that chief do you want to add anything this is just for the grading portion there will be just the grading there'll be another one later okay chief okay we're good all right okay motion to approve so moved second okay thank you all right <clears throat> roll call vote Councilmember Snow? Yes. Flynn? Yes. Wozniak? Yes. Wilms? Yes. Fowler? Yes. Burke? Yes. Carried 6 0. Okay, the last one of the evening is establishing a salary for city clerk to begin January the 1st, 2023. Um, we are looking at possibly a 5 to 6% COLA for all employees in order to be competitive with other cities. Um, crazy inflation these days is just what it is. However, um, at the work session, we agreed that no elected officials would receive this increase other than the city clerk because the city clerk is way under where, they, uh, where she needs to be, she being right there. Um, and so council agreed that we would give an increase on the 5% COLA, bringing the salary up to $23,100 which for the hour, hours that are put in, frankly, um, is a good deal. Thank you, Wanda. The current pay for the city clerk is 22000 I'm sorry, 20... This was a right, but the new one uh, will be 23, 23 Right. Okay. Motion to approve. Thank you. Second? Second. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Council Member Burke. Yes. Fowler? Yes. Wilms? Yes. Wozniak? Yes. Flynn? Yes. Snow? Yes. Terry? 6 0. Okay, announcements. The next City Council work session will be at 5 30 p.m. Monday, November 14th at the Bella Vista District Court. The next City Council regular meeting will be at 6 30 p.m. November 21st here in the court. The Planning Commission work session will be at 4 30 November the 3rd. Here in the court, the Planning Commission regular meeting will be 4.30 on Monday, November the 14th, here in the court. And the Board of Construction Appeals will be 3 p.m. Tuesday, November the 8th, if necessary, here in the court. And a special meeting on Thursday at 3.30. We don't have the times nailed down yet. It's going to be, oh. it's going to be announced. Oh, we have to wait. It's 3.30, I thought. Okay. All right. There will be a special meeting coming up on Thursday afternoon. We don't know the time. Um, it's to approve a sand and salt extension onto the former fire station number three, which is going to become an, an inclement weather station, if you like, for the streets department. But we don't have the time nailed down yet, and it'll be published um, fairly shortly, I would imagine. Okay, anybody else? I won't be here for the next work session. Okay, fair enough. So we're adjourned. Happy Halloween. Nope. Oh.